The Washington State Cougars will receive the opening kickoff. They'll go on offense with a, an offensive line made up of Doug Wilson from Ritzville, a freshman. Tackles Ken Kuyper, a sophomore from Gonzaga Prep in Spokane. Chris Dyko, a sophomore from University in Spokane. Guards are freshman Paul Wolf from Davis, California. And Mike Utley, a sophomore from Kennedy High in Seattle. And the old man of the group, Alan Boatman at center, a 6'1", 264-pound senior from Kettle Falls on that offensive line. That, Paul, is a very young offensive line group. They're going to get an education and I like you will not believe Arizona State loves to come after you they like to stunt and do some different things they like to do that on a defensive line so the Cougars are really going to have their hands full here in the first quarter It'll be James Hasty and Tim Stallworth deep inside the five-yard line for the opening kickoff, and up in front of them, Rick Chase from Olympia, who is standing on the 15-yard line as we get ready for the opening kickoff of tonight's football game. And doing the kicking will be Joe Sullivan, who will boot the ball off the 35-yard line for Arizona State. They will move left to right in front of us in their maroon jerseys, gold pants, and yellow helmets. Here's the kick, the run, and the long end-over-end kick going down inside the 10 to the 7-yard line. Taken there up the right side with the ball comes James Hasty. He'll get out to about the 50 yard line before he goes down hasty on the return to the 15 first down 10 Washington State that was a nice return by hasty he tried to pick the ball up on the right side of the field get it back in Washington State had set up a center return he was not able to get back in time good Arizona State's uh, specialty team play knocked him down so the Cougars make it the 25 yard line I said the 15 make it the 25 yard line it'll be on the right hash mark they'll have open side to the left and sidelines to the right as they come out for the first play of the football game it'll be Alan Boatman over the ball at center Ed Blunt the quarter back with Kerry Porter and Ed Tingstead as the split backs and the Cougars go to twins left two men out to the left side Tingstead in motion right back goes blunt pump fake right rolls to the left sets up throws the ball to the 40 yard line caught by Rick Chase little stutter step and he's out to around the 42 or three yard line before he's knocked down Rick Chase the senior wide receiver made the initial catch of the football game and is ridden down by 32 Anthony Parker the defensive cornerback on the right side the Cougars complete to the 44 yard line on their first try nice offensive series already by Washington State. They're coming out firing the ball. A little play action pass there. Blunt rolled to his right. Had Chase wide open. They were sending guys down the field. Did a nice job of finding the open receiver. 29 yard gain and a first down. Cougars on their first play go to the air. Now they're on the left hash at the 44 yard line. Two men to the right. The wide side. One to the left. The turn. Blunt with the ball. Keeps. Pitch back. Left side. Porter. Carry over the 45 around the left side. Then is rolled back as he got out around the 47 yard line or thereabouts. Kittrick Taylor is playing and Kittrick was one of the blockers on that play for him on the corner blocking in from the wide set out to the left side you can already see a difference in Washington State these guys are coming out fired up this is not like last week when they count came out definitely lackadaisical they're they knocking bodies down all over the field and Kittrick Taylor wasn't even they didn't even know if he was going to play today he's out there knocking guys down doing a fine job Rick Chase goes wide to the right side he has a slot man inside him to the right the ball is up at the 48 yard line it was a four yard gain second down six Michael James motion here's the handoff faked inside blunt runs to the right cuts it upfield over the 50 runs into Sun Devil territory down to the Arizona State 48 yard line and is knocked down at the 48 yard line of Arizona State finally in there to get him came uh, Robbie Boyd who is uh, what they call the the rover the strong safety man but he made the stop after a four yard gain to the 48 yard line of ASU the thing that makes the Sun Devil defense so tough is they fly to the ball so well Washington State likes to take advantage of that and run some counter bootleg action like they've been doing so far tight end Doug Wilson the freshman from Ritzville over on the left side now with a wing left and wide receivers both sides lone running back behind blunt now motion through by Victor Wood from right to left quick pitch Porter running the left side behind the blocking didn't get very much that time the Sun Devils rallied well to the ball and made the stop after about a yard gain by Kerry Porter the senior running back out of Great Falls Montana and for Arizona State leading the way defensively that time as they came after it was Scott Steven he is the devil that is uh, a kind of a roving linebacker position that they play Paul Moyer comes to mind as one of the people that have played that position. They're kicking to a pretty darn good uh, punt returner, number one in the Pac-10. Ball down to the 46-yard line on that run by Porter of two yards, so it's punt formation time, and Rob Meyer is in to do the kicking. They have a single safety back. Anthony Parker led the league last year. The snap is back. Here's the kick away. Good kick, a wobbler. It's fair catch signaled and taken at about the 12-yard line. So Anthony Parker under the pressure. Bob O'Neill there to check his dentures as he came downfield, and he'll take the ball at the 12, and so the Arizona 
Arizona State Sun Devils will have the ball for the first time on offense, starting at their own 12-yard line on the right hash mark as they will move left to right in front of our broadcast position. Nice opening series for the Cougar offense. Move the ball out of tough field position back on the 25 and pin to Arizona State down in their own 20 inside their 20 at the 12. A good kick on the play that time of uh, some 42 yards by Meyer, who uh, came into the ball game averaging a little bit better than 35. All right, we are ready with Van Raphorst with split backs behind him now as the quarterback to call the plays. Takes the snap, fakes the handoff, rolls back inside the five. Long throw to the left side. Man there, got the ball. He's over the 50 down to the Cougar 40-yard line and is necktied at the Washington State make it the 41 as Reynolds and Landrum were there to haul him down. It was Bruce Hill, the game co-captain for Arizona State, who caught that ball and took it to the Cougar 41-yard line. That's a 47-yard pass and run play. That time it was just man for man coverage in the Cougar secondary. They're trying to blitz a little bit. Van Rapport ran a play-action pass. Saw him. He was wide open. He had no safety help there because he was blitzing. Nice pass-catch combination for Arizona State. 47 yards and a first down, no score in the ball game. Ball at the Washington State 41 yard line. I formation in the backfield this time. The turn, the handoff to the fullback, straight up carrying Channing Williams, the junior from Sacramento, and he bangs off the right side behind right guard and right tackle. And Channing Williams takes it over the 40 down to the 38 for about a three yard advance for Arizona State, second down and seven. And at this point, we take an opportunity to say a very special hello, and let's hear a lot of noise out of you, all those folks at GOV Ford and Pullman who are on hand in the showroom tonight to watch the telecast and listen. Hi to you all from down here in the sunshine country, the Valley of the Sun. Eye formation by Arizona State once again. Van Raphorst at quarterback. Jeff with the ball now, drops back. The play fake to the tailback, throws over the middle high. It's going to be picked off at the 15-yard line. That ball was intercepted. The Cougars have it. Racing it out to the left side now goes Thomason, and he'll take it out of bounds up the 30-yard line. So Thomason picked it off at the 15 and returned it back out to the 30. So a turnover and only the second one this year for Arizona State. Van Raphorst had a kid wide open. He ran down, ran a hook about 15 yards down in the middle of the Cougar zone, and he just flat out overthrew the kid. Thomason playing center field, saw the ball, played center field, picked it up. Pretty good blocking for the Cougar defense. They almost looked like the offensive set that time, and he picked up some nice yards on the return. Cougars will be out of the huddle now with Michael James out to the left side. Rick Chase wide to the right. Cotton Sears is also in. Well, since the tight end, tight end will go to the right side. One running back. Now James in motion through on the 30-yard line. The turn, the pitch to Porter. Right side at the 30. Head down to the 33-yard line as he tried to wind it back toward the middle that time. Larry McLaughlin, the nose guard, pursuing well for Arizona State. A 6'2", 261-pounder out of Los Angeles came over to um, make the hit after a three-yard Kerry Porter gain. This is really where Kerry Porter made his debut in 1983, Bob. Uh, Reuben Mays was hurt the week beforehand. Kerry came in, had a great game, two touchdowns, well over 100 yards. He likes to play here. Well, so Kerry Porter now with nine yards on three carries. Second down, seven. Washington State at the 33. The line is down and set. No tight end this time. Three wide receivers, two running backs. Handoff into the right side. Ball fumbled, but pounced on immediately by Tingstead, carrying on the quick hitter on the right side as he crossed the 35-yard line. Ed Tingstead, whose younger brother plays as a backup linebacker for Arizona State and may be in the ball game against him before it's over. So we have a little bit of a family affair here. One plays linebacker for Arizona State. Ed plays running back for Washington State. They're going to be doing that for a few more years. I would think they will. They're going to play against each other at least three more times uh, so here we go again the Cougars now with a tight end back into the ball game is set on the left side the wide side of the field two receivers short side to the right split backs here's the counter option turn blunt pitch back Porter hit at the line and behind and rolled back from the 35 yard line Kerry Porter on the carry that time Darren Willis a co-captain and free safety up almost on the line of scrimmage with a snap got there to make the tackle for Arizona State. Arizona State was letting it all out there, blitzing. They were firing guys all over the place, man for man on the outside. That time they just ran into a blitz. Good defensive series for Arizona State. So a loss of one, and the Cougars now come to fourth down at their own 35 and five yards to go. Again, Parker deep, and they go to the short man chase, and he's hit behind the line and dropped on a fourth down fake punt at the 30-yard line, and Arizona State takes the ball over on the fake punt. They snap to the up back, Rick Chase, who once ran one for a touchdown against Oregon a couple of years back. Remember the game in which Reuben Mays had all that yardage? But that time, the ball went to Chase, the up back, and Arizona State was ready for it. They swamped him at the 30-yard line. That was exactly the formation Washington State wanted to see. They were going to do a little bit of oop de doop action today. That time they saw it. Just a great defensive effort by Arizona State. Both guys came flying through, ran right into Chase. If they had just been a step faster, they'd have blown by him. He would have had a lot of yards to run. 
So now the Sun Devils take over the football at the Washington State 30-yard line. It'll be first down, 10 yards to go at that point. And the Sun Devils will have it on the left hash mark, wide side, open side to the right, sidelines to the left when they come out of that huddle. We apparently have a timeout call down on the field. I think we will stay right here, however, as the officials have taken the timeout now and have marked it in the book. Brian Ford, the middle linebacker for the Cougars, who was a question mark performer, is in the ball game, is standing talking right now to the umpire for tonight's ball game. The referee is Jim Springer, and here are some scores of other Pac-10 games. Big football game down in Los Angeles, USC 20, Washington 10. That's the final. University of Arizona right down the street in Tucson beat, came from behind to beat Colorado 24-21. Nebraska crushed Oregon 48-14. Stanford 17-7 over Oregon State, who's the Cougars opponent next week. And San Jose State wallop California 35-14. to So that's Very interesting, as they say. All right, here comes Arizona State with 260-pound senior Kevin Thomas of Tucson over the ball. Van Raphorst, the quarterback. One running back behind him, Daryl Harris. And wide men both ways. The handoff to Harris on the sprint draw. He's on the left side of the 25 and down to the 23-yard line. And the tackle made for Washington State that time. Finally, for the Cougars, the stop is made about eight yards down the field. And it'll be a second down coming at the 23-yard line. So seven yards on the first play of the possession and the series by Harris running out of that tailback spot. That is his first carry of the game. Arizona State ready again. No score in the football game. Nine minutes to go first quarter. Cougars dig in at the line of scrimmage on defense. Almost a goal line set up front. Here as they sprint draw again. Harris slanting off the right side. Nothing there as he was uh, bumped by Rob Cleveland first. And then Cougar help came. Jim Krakowski, number 51 for the Cougars, was there to help make the tackle on the play along with Brian Ford and Cleveland. And they actually uh, were held to no gain right at the 23. Arizona State start out in their first two sets running a double tight end formation with one wide receiver. They're going to bring an extra couple wide receivers in, go into their passing formation in third and three. Maury Metcalf comes out of the ballgame for Washington State, and Arizona State goes to an I formation now, wide receivers both ways and a tight end to the left. Ball at the Cougar 23, third down three, motion out by Williams, pitch back to Harris, looking for the block at the 25 on the left side, short of the first down, down at the 21-yard line, as the Cougars rallied well that time, and I believe that uh, that was Brian Ford pursuing out of the middle, it was, who made the hit for Washington State. Excellent play by the youngster from the Montreal, Quebec area. Great effort. Uh, also a nice play by Ronnie Collins. He came up and forced the run back inside, allowing the WSU pursuit to go after him. They're going to go for it on fourth and one. And here comes Maury Metcalf into the ballgame now for Washington State defensively. And Bob Gregory comes out a little more heft in that defensive unit for the Cougars. It's a mass formation, two tight end, tight wing right, two running backs in. Van Raphorst with one yard to go, takes the handoff, hands off to his fullback, slanting left, and he'll take it down to the 15-yard line for the first down. Darren Tupper. A man who came into the ball game to line up at fullback. And the 5'11", 211-pounder from the Phoenix, Arizona area carried that ball for a first down. They'll put him at the 16-yard line and a first down after a five-yard Arizona State gain. It's tough to top, stop a kid that's 5'10", 211, who's leaning. He had about two inches off the ground in terms of running motion. That was just a nice, blocked, well-run, well-executed play for Arizona State. So on a nothing-nothing first quarter, the Sun Devils threatening at the Cougars 16 on the left hash mark. Cougars dig in tight at the line of scrimmage now. Long count out of an eye formation handoff fullback it's Williams up the middle he goes and takes the ball to around the 12 perhaps inside the 12 yard line the fullback Channing Williams who averages a bit better than three yards a carry carried at that time the history major who made the best in the West list when he was in high school and he carried the ball down to the 12 yard line that time for a four yard advance and it'll be second down and six yards to go Channing Williams on the carry Gregory out and Maury Metcalf back in as a linebacker for Washington State again and once again, it's a one running back set. Hand off to Harris, the tailback up the middle on a pretty good block. I think they trapped it open in the middle on the sprint draw that time in a trap. And he takes it down to around the five yard line. It is Daryl Harris, the tailback, carrying the ball. He is a junior out of Pomona, California, and a speedster. And he took the ball for a first down at the five-yard line, a seven-yard running game that time for Daryl Harris. Arizona State is just using their size up front to try to over to dominate the WSU defensive line. So far, they're doing a pretty good job of opening up those holes. Six and a half minutes to go in the first quarter. No score in the football game. 
Arizona State at the five-yard line of the Cougars now with a first down goal to go. Motion through from right to left by the wing back. Here's the pitch back to Harris with the blockers in front trying to get to the corner. Metcalf got him and dropped him back at around the nine-yard line. Maury Metcalf playing up there at the weak linebacker. That is the side where there's no tight end generally. And he came across the line of scrimmage in a hurry, made the tackle on Daryl Harris back at the nine-yard line. That's a four-yard loss for Harris and Arizona State. We've had eight consecutive running plays, so it doesn't take a genius to figure out which Coach Cooper wants to do. He wants to put it in there, and he wants to put it on the ground. Be prepared for a little play-action pass coming up here. Make it the eight-yard line where they put it down now. They've got it on the eight. So it'll be second down and goal from the eight at the left hash mark. Split backs. Here's motion through the formation left to right by the wide receiver now. And the handoff faked inside. Rolling Van Raphorst right. Throws. The ball is caught. Dropped. Incomplete at the three-yard line. Channing Williams diving and rolling for that ball. Failed to come up with it. He has caught just one pass this year for 16 yards. He failed to come up with that when it's incomplete. That was not really his fault. The ball was behind him. Williams was wide open. Play action pass. They rolled to the right side. They had two guys. One guy going deep another guy coming out of the backfield short that ball's a little bit behind tough catch he fell incomplete Jeff Van Rapphorst the quarterback 6'2 206 pounder from El Cajon California a real estate major his dad is in real estate development in Southern California I formation now in the ASU backfield on this third down play motion to the right here's the handoff fake to the tailback back Van Rapphorst throws to the right side it is incomplete at the goal line he threw into double coverage that time and the nearest two men were both Washington State Cougars Ricky Reynolds and Kevin Thomason with Reynolds diving trying to get to the ball that was intended for Channing Williams that ball was not well thrown at all he had two Cougars over there all the way he should have probably just held on to that thing look for another receiver but good pressure by the Cougar defensive line they're getting in there if you remember against San Jose State the young man threw 50 times not one sack Washington State's trying to get better at it. All right, in to do the field goal kicking now is Kent Bostrom. They'll kick off the 15-yard line at the left hash. It'll be a 25-yard go goal. It is up, end over end. It is good. That'll and be. so Arizona State takes the lead, but hold it. There's a flag down. It is apparently a field goal and a 3-0 lead, but let's see from Jim Springer, the referee, what the call is. Out he comes. He says they roughed the kicker. Now Arizona State has the option here of taking the ball with another down, and uh, let's see what their choice will be as the options are being explained by referee Jim Springer at the present time. They had scrimmaged at the 8-yard line, and will they put the po leave the points on the board, or will they take them off? It looks, Paul, like they're going to take the points off the board. I don't know if that's an automatic first down, but Ricky Reynolds came in from the right side, the top part of the field. He came flying in on the field. He got blocked into the kicker, but it still doesn't matter. He has to make an effort. Coach Walden is going absolutely nuts right now, so he's venting some of the wrath on the officials instead of on his players. Good to see it. Well, they take the ball down to the four-yard line, a personal foul roughing the kicker against Washington State, and it'll be Arizona State with a first and goal at the four-yard line. So remember this now. The Sun Devils have taken the three points off the lead. Jim Walden is almost out to the hash mark on the near side of the field, now retreating as he was very upset about that call. But it's a first and goal at the four for Arizona State. They'll have two tight ends, a wing back to the left, and an eye formation in the backfield. Motion through from left to right by the wing back. Here's the hand of the tailback, fake diving. They throw to the end zone. A diving try is incomplete. So once again, Van Raphorst couldn't get the ball to his man downfield. It was Chris Garrett, the wing back, who had come through the formation in motion, went diving in the end zone, but the pass was incomplete. Again, play action pass all the way, trying to get the Cougars to suck up there on defense. Good job by Ricky Reynolds, the corner out there. He stayed right with him. Van Raphorst has, has thrown four straight incompleted passes. He had the big 47-yard gain to start off the game, but he hasn't hit since. No, he hit a defensive back for an interception on the next one, and then three that were incomplete. Okay, throw a couple extra. All complete. right, here's the eye formation again. They've got a man in motion. He comes in, then comes out again. Hand off to the tailback. Harris! Slams through to score. Touchdown, Arizona State. Daryl Harris from four yards out took that ball and slanted in behind his right guard, Todd Kalis, and the right tackle, Scott Kirby, and just sprinted and sprawled into the end zone to score. And Arizona State has scored on a four-yard run by Daryl Harris. The first score of the ball game, a touchdown for Arizona State, and they take the lead in the ball game with 5:20 remaining to play in the first quarter. Just a slashing play right up the middle. At that time, Arizona State knocked down a couple of Cougars, wide open running. Garrett to hold, Bostrom to kick. The snap spotted. The end over end kick is up. It is good. And with 5:20 to go in the first quarter, it is Arizona State seven, Washington State nothing, and we take time out on this Cougar football broadcast. Place 31 yards. 
Four minutes and is he? Oh, he's mad. Yeah. He did. Yeah. <laughs> is, is that illegal? It isn't anymore. It used to be if they got blocked in, it was they'd let it go, but now they don't. He's still hacked. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Down on the sidelines, Jim Walden is steaming mad at the officials over the roughing call. He has not let up, and he's now yelling at some of his players as well. And now we're ready to go. Back deep are Stallworth and Hasty, and the run-up for the kickoff will now be by Arizona State. Kicking Joe Sullivan sends the ball high end over end to the five-yard line. Taken there now by Hasty up the field. He comes on the right side. He's over the 20 to about the 21-yard line. And that's as far as he'll go against Arizona State. And the Cougars will start trailing 7 to nothing now at their own 21-yard line. Big series for Arizona State. They went 12 plays. They only went 31 yards, but they ate up 4 minutes and 11 seconds. The big penalty on that play was a roughing the kicker that allowed them to come back. After they had the field goal to go up 3 nothing. Ricky got bounced into it. They gave him some extra life. So a couple of kicking game plays. One, the fake punt that didn't work, and then the roughing the kicker on the field goal wind up in a 7 nothing lead instead of 3 nothing for Arizona State. Cougars out of that hunt now with Alan Boatman, the senior, over the ball at center and split backs behind Ed Blunt in the offensive backfield. Arizona State with four down linemen at the line of scrimmage. Here's the turn, the counter option. Blunt running right, fakes the pitch, tries to turn up field, got to around the 23 or 24 yard line before he was wrapped up around the ankles and dragged down. The Arizona State Sun Devils getting good pursuit that time on the play, and there to uh, make the first contact was Frank Rudolph, a defensive end from Scottsdale, Arizona. That's just up the road. Scottsdale Road runs right past the stadium here. Thank you for the geography lesson. We I all appreciate thought I'd that. throw it in. Ball at the 24-yard line as Ed Blunt picked up just three on the carry that time, and the Cougars have a second down and seven yards to go. Washington State with the ball. Here is uh, Blunt rolling to the left side. Now Cox the arm throws up field. It is caught, and it got away. It's an incomplete pass I believe it will be ruled incomplete meant for Michael James who had gone down the field driving the defenders back and then curled back to meet the ball as Blunt Paul seemed to be running for his life oh he sure was that was play action again bootleg he's rolling out to his left tough throw for Blunt he just steps up and he's gonna throw back across the field he has James he hits him on a nice pass there's no no doubt about it hits him right in the bread basket Cardinal sin you got to catch the ball before you run so the ball returns now to the 24-yard line, 23-and-a-half-yard line. Signals called by Blunt with split backs. Two receivers short side to the right, tight end to the left. Motion through the backfield by Victor Wood now for Washington State. Fake pitch, handoff, Porter, big hole up the right side over the 30. 35 to the 40-yard line goes Kerry Porter before he is dragged down. Caught around the uh, ankles and dragged down by Robbie Boyd, who was their first man for Arizona State to make the hit. And several helpers came along to join in. Bob, that was the first Connor we'd seen all day. That's the thing about Arizona State. Their defense is so aggressive that they fly to the ball in any sign, type of motion. Blunt just faked the pitch, came right back to Porter. He picks up 17 yards. There was nobody there. Nice run by him. That's the Cougars' first rushing first down, their second first down of the ball game. They go to split backs, trailing 7 nothing at their own 41-yard line. Signals call. Blunt running left, going to follow the blocker into the line, kind of bounced back to the right side, got it out near the 45 before he disappeared under the maroon jerseys that time. Frank Rudolph is there for Arizona State. Also in the pile, linebacker Stacy Harvey for Arizona State. And they make the stop. It'll be just short of the 45-yard line. They'll put it back, I think, on the 44, a three-yard gain for Ed Blunt. Nice effort by Ed Blunt. He just just picked his way through. He looked like he was kind of dodging through bullets there. Saw a little bit of an opening. Really had no chance on the option that time because Arizona State covered it so well and he picked up as many yards as he could. Arizona State in front. 7-0 in the first quarter. 3.35 to go in the first period. Clock running. Split backs behind Blunt, the quarterback.
quarterback for the Cougars now. Nose man right on the center, Boatman. Wood motion through the formation. Here's Blunt running right. Hands the ball away that time. I think that was Tingsto. It was uh, Kerry Porter who went diving straight up into the line again and took the ball out around the 49, perhaps to the midfield stripe. Let's see as they unstack. Kerry Porter on the carry. Put it down on the 49-yard line. That was a nice run. Just a counter dive that time. Ed saw it. Pe it's interesting because that's not a set call. That's an option. If he sees the line open up, he can hand the ball off to carry, keep it, run down the line and pitch it. He saw an opening there and handed it off. Porter, six carries, 30 yards, a five per carry average so far in the ball game. Split backs, two men to the right side. Tingstead and Porter the backs. Here's motion. Cotton Sears through right to left. The handoff again into the left side. This time it's Porter over the 50 down to the 49, maybe the 48 on the short yardage situation. Should be close to a first down as they unstack. So let's see what the officials say as they unpile them. They had to get to the 49. Jim Springer says that's where they went, to the 49-yard line for a two-yard advance and a Washington State first down. Kerry Porter, two yards on the carry. Cougars first down, trailing 7 to nothing. Credit the Cougar young pups up there. They're doing a nice job of keeping those big guys off Porter and Blunt all night long so far. Yeah, the young pups are. They've given away some weight up there tonight as the result of the changes in that offensive line. Here's Wood over to the left side. That's not motion. He's just coming over to reset. Now motion by Kittrick Taylor back to the other side, to the right. Here's the quick pitch right. Tingstad around the corner, dives to the 45-yard line. Eddie Tingstad from Bethel High School in Spanaway in the Tacoma area in Pierce County he went diving that time down to the 45-yard line. So for Tingstad, it is a four-yard gain. And for Washington State, also a four-yard advance of the ball. The Cougars now on offense have 73 yards. Arizona State has 76. But Arizona State leads it by a score of 7 nothing with two minutes to go here in the first quarter. Second down, six at the 45-yard line of ASU. Split backs, motion through from right to left by Sears. Counter option turn. Fake to Porter, running right as blood. It's open. He might go 30, 20, 50. 10, 5, he is down to the goal line. Touchdown. He is out of oh. bounds at the one-foot line. He is out of <laughs> bounds a foot away. Darren Willis caught him around the shoulder pads and dragged him out a foot short of the goal line. What a run by Ed Blunt as he took the ball down the right side and Willis for Arizona State knocked him out of bounds a foot away. I'm sorry about that, Bob, but I thought he scored. I mean, he got his whole body and everything in there. I don't know if he was knocked out of bounds, if the ball was behind him or whatever the heck it was, but a great run. It looked like a broken play. I mean, he went all the way down the sidelines. He has one man to beat. He, all he has to do is take the body in there. Yep, good call. His foot went right out of bounds just at the last minute, dragged across. Beautiful run on a broken play. It really was, and the ball is now at the one-foot line, so the Cougars have first and goal, and only a foot to go with four plays to try to take it to tie the game at 7-0 ASU. Blunt sets the team now, receivers both ways, split backs. Blunt with the ball, tries to submarine and wedge his way for the foot. No sign yet, I don't believe he made it as he tried to just duck down low and follow the block of his center, Alan Boatman, into the end zone. The officials say no, he did not. It looked like a mix-up on the play. Ed really didn't get the ball. There was a fumble. A couple of Arizona State guys got in there. They'll have a tendency sometimes when they get down there to swipe at the ball. That causes problems in the exchange. You get a turnover. That was almost a biggie. So Ed Blunt reaching to try and retrieve that ball. Didn't gain anything. Didn't lose anything. The ball is still a foot away from the goal line. It is still 7-0 Arizona State. A minute nine to go in the first quarter. Cougars spread out. Trip left now. They'll bring Wilson to tight end over to the left side as well. One running back. He'll come in motion. Here's Blunt to Porter running left. Head down. He drags him in to score. Touchdown Washington State as Kerry Porter just took that ball and took tacklers with him and dragged them in. That's the old Kerry Porter of old. Beautiful run. Washington State did an interesting thing. They overstacked the line. They sent Wellstand over. They had a trips formation to the left side. So what they did is they outmanned Arizona State. They still had a couple guys on them. Kerry pulls it in there, and that's the old Kerry Porter that we've known to grow and love. Nice run, Kerry. That's his 33rd yard rushing in this football game, and it's also the first Cougar touchdown in this game. Washington State now trails by a point with 57 seconds left to play here in the first quarter. And in to do the extra point kicking is Kevin Adams. We are ready. The lines are set. The snap back. It's on the tee. The kick is line drived up there. It is good. And the Cougars have tied this ball game on the extra point by Kevin Adams following the one yard, very short yard run by Kerry Porter. And so the score here at Arizona State is Arizona State 7, Washington State 7. And we take time out on this Cougar football broadcast. All right. Uh, 44, 44 yards. Now tied 7-7. Washington State, Arizona State, 57 seconds remaining in the first quarter. The Arizona State Sun Devils are looking for the possibility of the onside kick. Now as the Cougars spread out, they'll drop back into regular receiving formation with two men deep 
And Nico Brastoff to kick it off for the Washington State University Cougars. Channing Williams, one of the deep men. Here's the run forward now. Brastoff kicks a knuckleball. Hits it to 20 to the 10. Picked up back there inside the 10-yard line. They will return the ball up the middle of the 20 to around the 27 or 28-yard line. It was returned by Bruce Hill. And we take 10 seconds for station identification. This is the Cougar Football Network. Bruce Hill on the return brings it back 22 to the 29-yard line. First down 10 for Arizona State. Cougar drive 10 plays, 79 yards, 8 of 4 minutes and 23 seconds, ending in the Porter touchdown. And here's Arizona State with the ball now. The snap, Van Rapport's bobbled it, rolls out to the right side naked, gets to the 30-yard line, across 35, up the sidelines and out of bounds at the Cougar bench, and away goes a flag. There's a penalty marker down as Van Raphorst ran the ball out of bounds into the Washington State bench under heavy pursuit that time, Paul. And there is a penalty marker down at the sidelines in front of the bench. And Jim Walden is just jumping up and down, shouting at the officials who are right out in front of his bench now within earshot. To be honest, I mean, who am I to talk about penalties? But that time, Van Raphorst, it, he blew the play all the way. He dropped the football. He just did a naked bootleg. He was trying to hand it off the sweep to the right side. Unfortunately, he couldn't do the very best thing. Took it up the field, but a couple of overzealous Cougars kind of pushed him out of bounds there. Yeah, no doubt about it. An extra 15 yards for late hit. He was just short of a first down, 10 yards on the run to the sidelines, and that'll take the ball down to the Washington State 46-yard line. And for Arizona State, a first down via penalty, and now their fourth first down in the game. The score tied, Sun Devils 7, Washington State Cougars 7 here at Tempe, Arizona. Arizona State out of that huddle. McDaniel and Kalis are their big guards via and Kirby the tackles Van Raphorst with the ball the quarterback straight back drop no fake throws home run ball down the middle man gets clear caught it at the five knocked down and lost the ball Thomason did a superb defensive job the receiver was open and on his way there are markers down back behind the line of scrimmage holding against Arizona State it won't show up in the record books Paul on that great play by Kevin Thomason but that was a super defensive performance that's exactly what the coaches teach a safety to do you have to get as deep as is the deepest receiver. Ricky Reynolds was running with him stride for stride, but he got caught up and he fell down, so the kid was wide open. Thomason saw it, came over and punished him. I like it. Boy, he did punish him. He hit him just short of the goal line. The ball was delivered by Van Raphorst. It was there, but now the penalty walk-off takes the ball back instead to the Arizona State side of midfield back to the Sun Devil 44-yard line. The nice thing about that, too, is a couple of uh, Cougar people were in there. Oh, somebody came flying in right up the middle. might have been Savage, number 75. He came in and absolutely punished Van Raphorst as soon as he let go of the ball. That's something we haven't seen all year. Tony Johnson out to the right side. Bruce Hill to the left now for ASUI formation in the backfield. Jeff Van Raphorst, their quarterback from El Cajon, California. The snap, the fake sprint draw to Harris, rolls left. It's open. He's going to run it. Van Raphorst to midfield, and his feet cut out from under him, and down he goes. Ronnie Collins, the safety man from Kashmir, up to make the hit and the stop for Washington State at the Cougar 48-yard line. So a gain on the play of eight. Washington State is losing their container on the outside. All they're doing is running play action, bootleg, whipping guys around there. Ronnie Collins had to make a nice play. So now it'll be second down and a short 12 to go, just under 12 yards. The ball is just short of the Cougar 48-yard line on the left hash. Wide men both ways, eye formation in the backfield. Cougars, four down linemen. The linebackers up tight on the ends. Here's Van uh, Raphorst, the handoff in the backfield now to the tailback. Harris, he started right angled back to the left over the middle and took the ball to the 45-yard line where his feet were knocked out from under him. And that, unless there's a flag down somewhere, will be the final play of the quarter at the 45-yard line of Washington State. And a gain of three by Darrell Harris, the tailback. So the first quarter comes to an end with a score here at Tempe, Arizona. Arizona State 7, Washington State 7. We take time out on this Cougar football broadcast. Might make a great title for a television adventure series, Desert Heat, but that's where we are tonight. Paul Sorensen and Vince DeMero and I and the desert heat in the Valley of the Sun, 86 degrees. You're looking awfully pink with your pink face and your pink shirt on there. Are you trying to tell us something? I promised you no nose jokes if you have no sunburn <laughs> jokes. <laughs> All right, we're ready to go. And sun, the Sun Devils will go to the shotgun now on the first play of the second quarter from the Cougar 45-yard line at third down. And a long eight, back goes Van Raphorst, sets up deep, throws over the middle check off to Harris down to the 40 35 to the Cougar 33 first down Daryl Harris 
Bob Gregory led the way defensively for Washington State and also there for the Cougars, linebacker Brian Ford. That is only the second Arizona State completion so far in the ball game, and they have both gone for first down. That time all Arizona State did was run their receivers out, spreading out this underneath coverage. Harris was wide open, nobody there to cover. So the Arizona State Sun Devils go over 100 yards now in total offense in the first half of this football game, and they have 59 yards passing on their two completions. One running back as Van Raphorst goes in behind the center again, takes the snap, hands Harris up the middle trap, over the 25, takes the ball down near the 21-yard line. Daryl Harris on the lightning quick opener, and the little guy really gets out of there in a hurry out of those starting blocks. He had 119 yards rushing last week, and he has also run well against the Cougars in past games. They put it down at the 22 yard line so a gain of 11 and a first down first quarter total offensive stats Arizona State had 97 total yards to, to Washington State's 108 time of possession Arizona State six minutes and 17 seconds Washington State eight minutes and 43 seconds and the score tied 7-7 but the Sun Devils on the move again at the Cougar 22 yard line left hash mark wide man goes to the right the open side two tight end offense and an eye handoff to the fullback Channing Williams slants off the left side good power drive that time blocking up in front by the lineman and the wide receiver angling across and willing Williams will take it down to about the 17-yard line, and Artie Holmes, after a five-yard gain, makes the tackle. Just a quick hitter. They were faking the pitch that time, came right back to the fullback, handed off, good blocking on the left side, getting into the Cougar secondary for a five-yard gain. And we have a Cougar player shaken up on the play. Bob Gregory is coming back into the ball game now, and over to the sidelines, Tuno Alapate to check with the coaches on the sidelines as treatment is administered on the field. This game is a production of Campbell Sports Incorporated under broadcast rights granted by Washington State University. Any rebroadcast or other use of this program without the express permission of WSU is prohibited. Brian Ford is the player shaken up, but he's walking off the field under his own power. Brian Ford's been finding off a pinched nerve. He did that Tuesday. Actually, he did a little bit against Cal, and then he re-injured it Tuesday, so that, that hurts. That sends those little spiders and tingly things down your arms when you do that. So here come the Sun Devils, who had gone over to the sidelines during the uh, time the injured player was being treated and removed. The Cougars will not be charged with a timeout with Ford leaving the game. Over the ball at center, Kevin Thomas, and we're ready. Wide men both ways, eye formation at the Cougars' 17-yard line. Here's the handoff to Harris up the middle, a weaving, slaloming run that'll be very close to a first down as he took the ball almost to the 12-yard line. He is very close. They'll put it down just outside the 12, and he had to go to just outside the 12. And referee Jim Springer is going to line it up, and I think he wants to bring in the chains and measure it to see whether or not it is a first down. As Harris, on a very good run up the middle, Paul, and they are running well in that area. With Harris, he gets out of the block so quickly. Oh, he's, he's a great runner, and Arizona State has always had sprinters in the backfield and the wide receiver core. Washington State that time was coming with a jet blitz, a full-out blitz. Both the strong safety were coming, and the corner was coming on the weak side because they had a tight end. Fortunately, Tomlinson was in the secondary because if he wasn't, Harris scored a touchdown. He blew right through there. So the ball is at the 12, but it is not quite a first down. They are just inches shy. And so with 13 minutes and 14 seconds remaining to play in the first half and the score deadlocked at Arizona State 7, Washington State 7, it is Arizona State's football. They have it just outside the Cougar 12-yard line, just inside the left hash mark with wide side to the right. They go to a two tight end offense and a wing back set to the right split backs behind Van Raphorst, the quarterback. Signals calls with the ball turns, gives off. Williams right side, slants it down to the 11 and a first down. The fullback, Channing Williams, 5'10", 216 pound junior out of Sacramento, California. And he takes it to the 11-yard line for a yard gain and a first down. That's where they really miss Brian Ford in there. He's such a rangy kid. He flies from sideline to sideline so well. Tuni Alapati came in there along with Tomlinson, the safety, to finally knock him down. But you need to have a big guy in there that can be nasty and gritty and knock guys back. Gregory in for Krakowski at the weak side linebacker for Washington State. Split men both ways, split backs. Behind Van Rapphorst, ball at the 11 and a 7-7 first half. Signals called. Here's the turn, the handoff in the backfield. It's Harris on the little scissors play back over the middle and he takes it down to the five yard line and there is Ronnie Collins and also there Artie Holmes to help out for the Cougars on the stop at the five but Arizona State continues to move they pick up six on the play it'll be second down four right now Arizona State is really hurting Washington State between the tackles they're starting to take advantage of that size and experience up front they're working over the Cougar a little bit up in the middle Harris now has carried the ball a total of 10 times for 42 yards it is second down Four at the five-yard line, right out in front of the goalpost. Two tight end offense, split backs in tight. Signals called. Van Raphorst with the ball to Williams. The fullback slants off the left side. He's inside the five, down to about the three. 
So the fullback on just uh, put both arms over the ball and hold on to it, slash to the left side, carried it down to the three-yard line, and check it, it was Darren Tupper, not Williams, running at fullback that time. Darren Tupper, a couple of yards down to the three, and it's third down and two. Again, at Washington State was flying in there with a blitz. Both corners, both linebackers were getting in there, kind of clogged Williams or Tupper up at the line of scrimmage and knocked him back. Williams is back in at fullback. Harris, the tailback, as they come out in the eye. And now a timeout will be called here on the field. Timeout called by Arizona State's Sun Devils as uh, we have 11.22 to play in the first half. The score tied Arizona State 7, Washington State 7. The Sun Devils take a timeout while knocking on the door, and we take timeout on this Cougar football broadcast. Watch play action. I bet you five bucks on play action. Steal the ball. In motion through right to left by a fullback playing that wingback spot. Here's the pitch now to Harris. Right side. He will go in to score. Daryl Harris started wide right and then cut it sharply back. Got his helmet into the midsection of the defender and just wedged his way into the Cougar end zone to score. A one-yard run by Daryl Harris. And Arizona State goes back on top again, this time by a score of 13-7 to with the extra point try yet to come. A one-yard run by Harris with 10 minutes and 39 seconds remaining to play in the first half. And the extra point try coming now from Kent Bostrom, the sophomore from Wheaton, Illinois. They will spot the ball on the 10-yard line, and Bostrom is ready to kick it. The lines are set and down. Motion by the Cougar defense back. Here's the snap back. The ball on the ground is kicked. End over end, it is good. And so with the extra point, good. With 10.39 to go now in the first half, the score is Arizona State 14, Washington State 7, and we take time out on this Cougar football broadcast. Much of that time did that eat up? I don't know. Five minutes. In. Sullivan runs forward to kick the ball for Arizona State. It is a short, high kick coming down now. It will hit inside the 15, bounces up, picked up by Hasty. Up the field he comes to the 25 and almost to the 30-yard line and perhaps rolled across it, and the flag goes down as Hasty brought the ball out to about the 30-yard line on the return, and we have a penalty flag down. Arizona State went 13 plays, 72 yards, eight up five minutes and 25 seconds, culminating in the Harris touchdown. Big series. It was just to grind them up. They didn't do much passing. They ran it almost the whole time. The penalty will be against Washington State now as the offensive unit comes on. That offense tonight with Ken Kuyper at 262 at left tackle, Chris Dyko at 6'8", 265 at right tackle. The guards tonight are Paul Wolf, 6'4", 250, and Mike Utley, 6'7", 286. In the center, Alan Boatman, 6'1", 264. It is a holding call against Washington State, and it'll take the ball back to the Cougar 18-yard line. So Washington State will start at the 18, first down and 10 with a score. Arizona State 14. Washington State 7 and the Cougars one touchdown did come on a long drive of some 79 yards so they're capable of taking it down the field they'll have to go this time from their 18 72 yards away Blunt checking off at the line of scrimmage it's noisy in this stadium with more than 70,000 back goes Blunt no fake throw right side hard but he threw beyond the reach of Michael James and beyond the sidelines and the pass is incomplete over to cover was Scott Steven the devil or roving linebacker for Arizona State and the pass was thrown behind the receiver Michael James. That reason, the reason Ed uh, audible is he saw Arizona State was in a in a zone defense that time. He knew that the out was susceptible to to doing some things. He threw it. Unfortunately, he just threw it wide, incomplete. Chase Wood and Taylor come in as wide receivers in a new grouping now for Washington State. 
It'll be Kittrick Taylor wide to the left. Rick Chase slotted inside him, and out to the right goes Victor Wood. Split backs with no tight end in the formation, and now Blunt checking it off again at the line of scrimmage. Maybe making a quick call. The left guard moved too soon. The ball play is whistled down as the Cougars came out of there, tried to run it, and the left guard, it appeared, Paul Wolf jumped a half count too soon. That's where inexperience and noise come into play because you have a young kid in there. He plays in front of 5,000 people at UC Davis or you know Davis High School, and it just gets to you. It's tough. You can't hear the audibles. It makes it hard on the linemen to make the checks. It really is difficult to play in that. A crowd of 70,000 can make your helmet ring. You'd be it's surprised. It really is. It's like being inside a giant bell at times when they really get going. Have you ever been inside a giant bell? Uh, yeah, a few times. Okay. <laughs> I've been around some feelings, I'll tell you that. <laughs> ball back at the 13-yard line. Now it's first and 15. Here's Blunt with the ball. Second and 15. Back he goes. Little collision. He's being chased inside the five. Hit and down he'll go at the four-yard line. Blunt, as he turned away, bumped into one of his running backs. That kind of broke the cadence of the play, and then he rolled back and was running for his life. He got way back inside the five, finally fought his way back to the four-yard line, and Eddie Blunt went down at the four, a loss of nine on the play. That's one thing Arizona State does not let you do. They have such great team speed, they don't let you get outside the edge. Eddie was running for his life. He had Michael James wide open down the middle of the field, but it doesn't matter when you have 10 guys trying to hammer you. Who cares? He was just trying to hang onto that ball. You know, this is a situation I would be surprised if we see a quick kick. Might do. Uh, the Cougars have used it before. Now they'll go to split backs. Two wide receivers out to the right side, and the tight end is to the left. Back to pass Blunt. It's a draw. Porter up the middle at the 10. At the 15, and he takes the ball out almost to the 20-yard line. So the Cougars that time, with Blunt dropping back, go to the draw and get themselves some operating room to get the kick away. The play to the 19-yard line. So a 15-yard run that time by Kerry Porter for Washington State. But not a first down because of the previous nine-yard loss. But Kerry Porter now has carried the ball of this game in the first half for 48 yards. Punting time. And here is Rob Myers in to do the kicking. Rob ready here's the snap back now had a little trouble getting a handle on the ball gets the kick away and the lone return man has it at his own 41 and his own man knocked him down he was knocked over that time Anthony Parker knocked off his feet that time as Tim Scholes came down got in the middle of the play and then one of the Arizona State players also got there Greg Clark and got tangled up boy Scholes took Clark the, the, the official and everybody else out of the play. It looked great. Thank you very much. Nice Arizona State punt coverage on that time because it was the Arizona State guy that finally knocked him down. But the reason he did, Tim Scholes really did a nice job of sprinting down there underneath the punt. And the reason being, he fumbled the snap, made it tough for him. Good hang time, good speed. Scholes, who started it all with a snap, he's the center on the uh, punt formation. Ball at the 41-yard line of Arizona State. Eye formation with the ball. Van Rapphorst fakes the uh, draw, rolls back to the right, going to throw the long bomb down the right side, looking for for his receiver intercepted Reynolds got it at the 12 yard line Ricky Reynolds dropping back covering Bruce Hill on the play the intended receiver and Reynolds like a center fielder caught it over his shoulder this is baseball spring training country Ricky's ready and second interception for Washington State Tomlinson had one in the first quarter Ricky came back there and I'll tell you he really looked like a wide receiver that time he caught that ball if that had been me it had bounced off my helmet and probably landed in the cheap seats 25 rows up nice pick by Ricky one we saw today on television <laughs> a guy who looked like he was open and caught the ball on his face mask and lost it if you'll recall one of the nationally televised games today but not Ricky on that one well the nice thing when you played you didn't have any face masks so you didn't have to worry about that. you can tell right yep. <laughs> no nose jokes no nose jokes right <laughs> all right we are ready split backs for the Cougars at their own 12 yard line now first down 10 yards to go here is Blunt with the ball rolling back deep to the right throws upfield and overthrows Kittrick Taylor up around the 23 yard line he was throwing for the line to gain marker on the Cougar sideline and just overthrew Kittrick Taylor that time and it's an incomplete forward pass and so the Cougars face a second down and 12 situation. Washington State through the air is one for four so far for 29 yards. Well Kittrick was really covered. Robbie Boyd the rover back and also Jeff Joseph the left corner were right there so it would have been an awfully tough completion. He had two Arizona State Sun Devils all over. Cotton Sears will be wide to the right side now for Washington State. Tingstad goes in motion out to the left. Back goes Blunt to set up. He's in the pocket. Throws up the middle to Victor Wood at the 30. He is hit there and falls to the 31-yard line. Good for a first down. Victor Wood, the receiver, he was set out wide to the right side, inside Cotton Sears, and went upfield and caught that ball and fell to the 31. That is a 19-yard Cougar passing gain on the throw by Eddie Blunt. 
So Blunt now with that second pass completion in five attempts has 48 total yards through the air and the Cougars pick up their second passing first down on their second completion. 14 to seven, Arizona State leads second quarter. Split backs for the Cougars now. Wide receivers both ways. Blunt with the ball, fakes the handoff inside, drops back. Throws hard over the middle, overthrows James and underthrows a deeper receiver. That uh, maybe Kittrick Taylor and is downfield at the 40. He overthrew one and underthrew the other, Paul. He just kind of put it right in between them. Oh, I know if Ed could get that ball back, he wanted to go for Kittrick. Kittrick had, his, had the cornerback beaten. They were man for man coverage. Perfect play. Play action pass all the way. Froze the linebackers. James was wide open. Kittrick was wide open. But so was the ground in between them because that's where the ball landed. Like my golf shots, if there's <laughs> water anywhere, I'll hit into that. Now two men split to the left in motion through now. From left to right comes Cotton Sears. Signals called. Blunt on the draw. Porter up the middle. 35 to the 36-yard line. A five-yard advance. Terry Porter, the big senior running back out of Great Falls, who had a 1,000-yard rushing season two years ago, but then ran into some physical woes. That time picked up five more to the 36-yard line. It'll be third down for Washington State and five yards to go. This is where Arizona State and their defensive formation really like to come after you. They're, like, they're going to show some different fronts, try to confuse Ed up front with the blitzing and do some things. They want to put pressure on you. That's the kind of defense Arizona State is. It'll be a long five. The ball is just across the 35-yard line. It's short of the 36. Motion now left to right by Michael James through the formation. Here's Blunt. Here's the draw again to Porter. Slipped the tackle. He's got the first down. 40, 45. He broke it in the middle at the 40, 30. He fa head fakes right, then goes back left and is tackled at the 20 yard line. Kerry Porter was on his way. He found a defensive back playing deep. He made a head fake to the right, tried to come back to the left, and down he went. They'll put him at the 21-yard line. A 43-yard run by Kerry Porter, and he pushes 100 yards in well, this ballgame. It's something about this stadium that makes Kerry Porter run absolutely nuts. He just did a great job of get breaking all the tackles. Arizona State was in a tough defense because the free safety flew out of there. He was covering Woods, the wide receiver. They man-for-man -man coverage. He broke up there. There was nobody left he got caught from behind. Porter, 96 yards in the ball game, four short of a century. First half with 7-10 yet to go. Signals called now. First down. Cougars driving, trailing 14 to 7. Ed Blunt with split backs. Turns, counter option. Going to run left, pitch back late. Tingstad around the corner, 20. Down near the 15 yard line goes Eddie Tingstad. Ed took the ball down to the 15. That's about a six yard run for Ed Tingstad of Washington State. And the Cougars are very close to 200 yards of first half offense in this football game. When Steve Broussard went out on Tuesday with a dislocated shoulder, Eddie Tingstad hasn't seen much action, but he's really looked good tonight. He's coming in there, and he d he's the kind of guy you don't want to run into. He just puts his nose down, and he dares people to take him on. He'll hammer you. Ed is an outstanding student, so he learns quickly. He knows what to do. Split backs, two wide men right, one left. Here's the handoff by Blunt now inside to Kerry Porter. And Porter goes slamming in with Mike Pringle running in the backfield now for Washington State. So that uh, Porter was out, and uh, that was Tingstead on the carry. It was Tingstead and Pringle, the running backs. And Tingstead carried the ball down inside the 15. They'll put it down at the 13 for a two-yard gain. Well, I think Kerry Porter needed a little bit of a blow when he, he ran in that long run, the 47 or 43 yarder. They also ripped his helmet off. He came back over there, wiped some grass off his face, took a drink of water. He's back in. I wouldn't be surprised if he carries the ball again. Would not be surprised at all. He's in there now with his running mate in the backfield, Mike Pringle. Pringle set to the right, Porter in the fullback spot to the left. Here's motion through from left to right by Victor Wood. Here's the turn. There's Porter up the middle. He's at the 10, inside the 10 for a first down. So the Cougars have a first and goal as Kerry Porter goes over 100 yards in the first half, Paul. It's just one of those things. There's the kind of kid you love to have in the program. Nobody knew about him out of Great Falls. He's a hardworking, smart kid. Everybody likes him. You like to see success come to those kind of people. God bless him. Actually, Porter is exactly at 100 yards by our unofficial count. The Cougars have their fifth rushing first down, trail 14 to 7, the ball at the nine-yard line, and the Cougars are over 200 yards of offense in the first half. Now, Blunt can't get his signal call for the noise. Now he's ready. He has the line set and down, trying to check off again, calling to the outside, the wide men. Split backs. Back goes Eddie Blunt to pass. Throws right side. That ball is batted back in his face. That pass was blocked by Arizona State and just driven back at him. Tolini right 
one of the defensive linemen from Pango Pango made the block on that play for Arizona State. Sean Patterson also the defensive tackle for Arizona State was in there putting a lot of pressure on Blunt on the backside. He had Kitcher Taylor wide open in the end zone. Had he been able to get it to him, touchdown Cougars, but good defensive line play for Arizona State. They knock it down. Cougars are two for seven, so is Arizona State, but the Cougars have picked off two Sun Devil passes in the game. Second and goal at the nine-yard line, running room to the right for Washington State. Motion through now by Victor Wood. Here's Blunt the fake, the hand back to Pringle, driving in on the left side, and Pringle takes the ball down near the six-yard line before he's stacked up and pushed back by the Sun Devil defense. Arizona State in their maroon jerseys, their yellow helmets and yellow pants, and leading the way defensively that time for ASU was Greg Clark, a linebacker, and they'll put the ball down at the six-yard line, so Pringle picks up three, and the Cougars face third and goal from the six, and they have a little more running room to the right than the left. This is a situation where when you have Kittrick Taylor in the ball game, it's nice to kind of isolate him one-on-one -on -one with a corner, throw the ball up there, let him go after it, see if he can score a touchdown. He will go wide to the left, and Anthony Parker will take him one-on-one. -on -one. That's a pretty good matchup out there on the left side for the Cougars' defensive right side. Here's Blunt, lobs the ball for Taylor in the end zone, touchdown, Washington State! Kittrick Taylor going against Parker, and Blunt laid the ball up on a time pattern perfectly over his shoulder, and... Kittrick, sore toe and all, ran under that ball and hauled it down. What a great one-on-one -on -one matchup, and Kittrick Taylor won it, and the Cougars score. That's the hardest coverage. That's the hardest thing to, to cover when you're a defensive back because it's just a timing pattern. Kittrick is a great receiver. If you ever saw him play basketball, he's got some great air time. He can really get up there. The ball is perfectly thrown. Good defense. Touchdown, Cougars. So it is 14 to 13. The extra point try, Kevin Adams now from Cascade High, and Everett will boot the ball. Blunt will hold it at the 10. Here's the snap back. The spot end-over-end kick is good, and so the Cougars have tied the score now with 4 minutes and 26 seconds remaining in the first half. It is Washington State, 14, and heavily favored Arizona State, 14, and we take time out on this Cougar football broadcast. Okay. Okay, good. Good, good, good. Okay, I got to log that pass and yardage. Let me okay. see. Uh, this is a great game. Oh, we're going great. Yeah. Jeez. I like that was, it. That was six, right? Yeah, six the yards. Don yeah. Key Sheeters play this one. Deal. Come on, Kugels. I knew they were going to do this. Come on, guys. Hang in there. Six yards. Okay. Want to come back and highlight it? Or wait sure. Take well, we got time. See how their time is. Okay. Well, as we get ready for the kickoff, Paul, I'm, uh, you know, we're talking about all these things the Cougars are doing differently. Have you noticed the pants they're wearing tonight? Yeah, they have them on. That's yeah, they're sign. different, but they're but different. They <laughs> have white stripes going down the side. <laughs> they're, 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 they're red, white, and blue. Really? They're, yeah, they're different pants. They haven't worn those before. Here's the kick now. A floater down the middle by Obrastoff inside the 10. It is scooped up back there. They will run it out of there, and carrying the ball is Bruce Hill up the right side over the 30 to around the 33-yard line. Second nice drive for Washington State. 11 plays, 88 yards. They had up 4 minutes and 46 seconds, culminating the, in the blunt to Taylor touchdown of 6 yards. Nice drive by Washington State. The big run, Kerry Porter. 43 yards. Yeah, the Cougars wearing something a little bit different down there tonight uh, in their uniforms, and uh, perhaps they're feeling like a brand new group. Well, they are, and you have to credit Coach Wall. The reason he's tirating is he wants these guys to win so badly. He has so much of his heart in the program, he just wants success for the kids. So here is Arizona State in a 14 all football game, 420 to go in the first half at their own 33 yard line first down. A one running back set, handoff to Harris, not going to get very much as he has spilled after about a yard gain trying the right side, and the Cougars came after him. Tim Downing was there to make the first hit defensively, a 248-pound freshman from Durham, California. He's a big raw bone kid out there. You know where he lives? He lives out at the agricultural farm taking care of farm animals during the week. You don't think punching doggies get you <laughs> tough during the week? I like this guy. His practice is throwing them over fences <laughs> and things, I suppose. 
tackle in the Arizona runners are not too tough. Split backs now behind quarterback Jeff Van Raphorst. 14 all ball game, second quarter. Back goes Van Raphorst, sets up deep with no fake, lobs a little soft one, check off over the middle. Harris up to the 40 and hit from behind and down he goes at around the 43 yard line as the Cougars finally ran him down. And it was Chris Hiller, a junior from Fort Vancouver High School in Vancouver, Washington, who made the stop. Chris Hiller did a nice job. He's up there playing defensive line, putting pressure on Van Raphorst. Then he comes flying back. The neat thing about Washington State this year is their team defense is really flying to the ball. You're not seeing one or two tackles. You're seeing four and five guys around him. That was a good indication when four or five tacklers were around Harris on that play. Maury Metcalf comes back in. Bob Gregory comes out of the, as a linebacker on the weak side. That's the, usually the no tight end side. Now there's a tight end on both sides and a wing back off to the right. Split backs in the backfield. Van Raphorst hands off to Channing Williams, the fullback, trying for the first down of the short yardage situation. He'll get it as he takes the ball out over the 45 to the 46 yard line and that's good for a first down on about a three yard run a very short three but he did pick up three in a first down that's just smack mouth football they line 11 guys up there and they get after you nice run that time by Channing Williams off the right side they've been very effective running off tackle tonight those big defense offensive tackles for Arizona State are starting to beat up on our little defensive tackles a little bit it might be a long second half unless the Cougars can get rejuvenated in the dressing room uh, during halftime now wide men both ways and split backs it's first down Arizona State Van Rapport's quick drop back now going back a little bit more sets up lobs over the middle through the hands of Harris and incomplete he tried to get the ball to Daryl Harris the tailback and the junior from Pomona simply could not hold on to the ball it slipped through his hands went incomplete and that'll bring up a second down 10 now let's see what the problem is it looks like one of the Arizona Staters may have lost a contact lens they're all gathered around over there in a little circle and they're checking to see uh, if they can find it or not. Either that or he's got a feeling of the fuzzies where he looked like he took a shot to the side of the head. He's trying to figure out what planet he's on right now. Well, they're still working, whether it's on him or for him, I'm not sure. But the uh, player is over there. He's the center, Kevin Thomas. They're not going to start without Thomas either ready to play or replace. Oh, he is, he's really a good one at 6'3", 260 pounds. He's really anchored Arizona State all season long. He was really inspirational last week against SMU at a super game on their highly touted nose guard. It's interesting. Washington State on that last defensive series blitzed a bunch of guys. They had seven guys pressuring Van Raphorst could play by the Arizona State offensive line because Van Raphorst didn't have much pressure on him. He kept all seven of those guys out. Jim Walden feeling a little bit better now than he did earlier in the ball game when he was leaping and yelling at the officials. Now his team has really bounced back. They lead statistically. They're tied on the scoreboard with 233 to go in the first half. By the way, Kevin Thomas, well, let's play the name game again a little bit. Thomas, the center, is a home economics major, which is an unusual major, I guess. And on the other side of the ball, they have a middle guard, a nose guard, whose first name is Sate. Oh, please. You like is he it. a home economics major? No, he's he not, cook? as a matter of fact. I think he's a PE major, but he's a he's a big guy. No, Sate, as a matter of fact, is an art major. Can you imagine the Afghans Thomas could knit the size of that guy? <laughs> Well, the ball is still at the 46-yard line. It is second down and 10 yards to go. They've got a wave going here now at Arizona State. And I hope, no, I shouldn't say. I was going to say I hope that they fall out of the upper deck doing the wave because I'm an anti-wave type, but uh, they're going to do it anyway. After seeing all the waves in the kingdom, boy, I tell you, you get tired of those things. I think the only people that do it well are the people in Seattle. Yeah, they started, it, uh, they started it. They should keep it. You bet. And please, when I'm there, don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll hold up a Bob Robertson sign, so if they see the wave going, we'll just kind of stop it right there and get back to our I side. have a feeling when we go over to Seattle a year from now, they'll probably have a special wave for you and me in the stadium. So Yeah, they'll wave us right out. Uh, the, ne never right mind the what exit. they wave. I, <laughs> well, we're about ready to resume now. And I'm looking to see if Thomas remained in the ballgame or not. No, he did not. They've made a change, and Steve Sperling, a 254-pound sophomore, is now in the ballgame at center for Arizona State on second down 10 from their own 46 yard line. Cougars, four down linemen. The linebackers on the outside are right up on the line. So is Collins. Here's the handoff in the backfield. Harris running left. There's a little hole. He's at the 50. Good little duck in turnout fake down to the 40, 35 and grabbed and out of bounds. Alapate got him at the 30 yard line. They say he's down in bounds just inside the sidelines at the 30. But what a fine run that was. 24 yards and a first down by Daryl Harris. They caught Washington State in a blitz again. Collins was coming up. He flew up field, took on Williams, the fullback. But Harris saw it, read out. Nice block on the end by Arizona State, knocking the Washington State in. Alapati did a nice job of catching Harris. He showed excellent speed. He has good speed. He can go. He's an excellent linebacker. He's playing in the middle with Ford out of the game now. Eye formation for Arizona State. 14 all tie. We're down 
a 2.08 to go in the half. Here's the handoff again to fake to Harris or given to Harris, and he goes up the middle and gets just about back to the line of scrimmage. Hiller is there, one of the lead tacklers for Washington State, and also there for the Washington State Cougars was Bob Gregory, and for the Cougars as well, Mark Ledbetter, the young man from Puyallup, who is an All-State High School linebacker, now a defensive tackle. Washington State really has a quick defense in there right now. Bob Gregory's only 195 pounds, former defensive back, so these guys are doing a good job on team speed on terms of the defense. Second down, 10 at the 30 of Washington State, Arizona State's ball in the tie ball game. Here is a uh, fake draw now. Back Van Rapport steps up in the pocket, throws to the right side. It is incomplete. I think Alapati got a hand on it, intended for Bruce Hill, the wide receiver and co-captain. Downing applied the pressure, and Alapate, I think, got a fingertip on the ball. Boy, Downing just, he defeated his block in the middle of the line of scrimmage. He came flying in, knocked Harris on his keister, and then came right in and got in Van Rapport's face. I'm not impressed. I mean, he's probably a good quarterback. He threw for 500 yards last year, but he's not been on tonight. He's been throwing the ball behind receivers, not finding the open receivers, and trying to force it into coverage. Just this week, they moved a new man into the backup spot, Dan Ford, who transferred here from Tulsa following his coach John Cooper when he came, but had to redshirt last year, and he might be about due for some action. Back goes Van Raphorst out of the shotgun. Sets up back on the 40, throws right side, incomplete at the 15-yard line, and Ricky Reynolds did a magnificent coach for his job on Bruce Hill, the wide receiver out of Lancaster, California, and it is another incomplete pass. They are three for 11 through the air for 65 yards. People just don't realize how tough that is to cover a guy man for man all across the field. Ricky Reynolds had the receiver all over. Van Rapport had plenty of time. The receiver ran down, broke across the middle. The nice thing about that is Ricky came around, knocked the ball down without hitting the receiver, causing the pass interference. Field goal time for Kent Bostrom and the Arizona State Sun Devils. They'll try to untie it with 120 to go in the half. It'll be a 47-yard goal from just inside the left hash mark. Snap back. It's on the tee. Bostrom's kick with a flag down is going to be short and wide to the right. It will hit in the end zone. It is waved off by back judge Dan Inveen. And now we have a flag down, so let's see what that is back at the line of scrimmage. It may be against Arizona State. It's illegal procedure, and I think the Cougars will decline it and will take the football at the 30-yard line, first down and 10. Nice defensive series for the Cougars that time. Arizona State had a pretty good drive going, started at their own 33, moved it all the way down to the Cougar 30-yard line. I think it might have been a little pressure by Ricky Reynolds that caused the, caused the kicker for Arizona State. It looked like he pulled his head, pushed that ball off the right, kind of bounced in the end zone picked off a couple of guys down there. Nice play for them, though. Hey, by the way, I was handed a note just a few minutes ago. It's from uh, Puyallup, from uh, Denny and Diane Seaholm, who are here. They say, go Cougs. So we've got the note here. They're somewhere among the 70,698 down there in the stands. Had a good contingency of Cougars come down from the Washington area. A lot of people here. All right, here we go from the 30. Back goes Blunt, quarterback draw. Runs it back up the middle over the 35 to the 37-yard line. Eddie Blunt, who is so quick when he goes back and gives that, that one step set up and then takes off. We're down to one minute to go as Blunt brought the ball out to the 37-yard line. The Cougars pick up seven. It's second down and three yards to go. And Blunt with that gain now, 52 yards on six carries. So he has rushed the ball well. Kittrick Taylor comes out now for Washington State. Second down three. Ball inside the right hash mark as the Cougars in their white jerseys go from left to right. Signals called by Blunt. He'll send Porter out in motion to the left side. Pringle remains. Back to pass. Rolling right goes Blunt now. May run it. Nope. Going to throw. Upfield it goes. Tipped in the air. It is incomplete. Almost intercepted. Pringle comes up to try and get to that ball at the last minute as it was knocked away. It was finally knocked out of bounds by Jeff Joseph, the second Arizona Stater to get there. Eric Allen was there, and then Joseph, who was playing in the nickelback set, came over and knocked it away from him. Allen made a nice read that time on Blunt. He saw, uh, I don't know who it was, one of the wide receivers out there, I think it was Cotton Sears, broke out. Allen read it perfectly, broke right underneath the coverage. Unfortunately, he was not able to pull it down. That would have been a big turnover against Washington State because there's still 31 seconds left in half. Score tied 14-14, Washington State, Arizona State. Blunt with split backs behind him in the backfield. Has the ball, gives to Porter. Carry up the middle. Has the first down as he crossed the 40 just barely. He got just out over the 40, perhaps to the 40 and a half before he was grabbed around the ankles, and that will stop the clock on the gain for a first down by Washington State. And now Kerry Porter is over 100 yards as they'll put the ball down at the 40-yard line. 
So for Kerry, a three-yard advance, and for Washington State, a first down. The thing that Washington State's been so effective on in this first half is running the counter plays. They're getting Arizona State out of their defense. They're flying to the ball, and then they're coming back with the opposite running back, handing off to him. Kerry Porter's had a couple of great runs tonight, and that's good to see. Ed Tingstad's played well. Mike Pringle's played well. The whole Cougar team has played well. They're hanging right in there against team people are picking them to get beat 66 to nothing. Maybe eventually, but at least if they're going to score a few points first. Well, I'll tell you, the young people have rallied extremely well. They have filled the holes, and they've done it uh, with some of that pride that Jim Walden was trying to rebuild into this football team, and they have done, as you've indicated, a very, very good job of doing that under tremendous pressure. Well, Cooper's going to go back in at halftime, the head coach for Arizona State, and he's going to hound on his guys. He's saying, what is the deal here, folks? This isn't, you know, you just don't show up and win a ball game. This is the same type of motion that Washington State had against Cal last week. They don't have that anymore. This is not a very understanding fan group down no. here in Arizona State either. I have been here when they walked out on football games when their team was losing, and I have heard them many times boo and boo loudly and long against what they thought was not a good performance. And John Cooper, I'm sure, already is aware of that, and if he does not uh, get his team picked up in the second half, he may start to learn something about the fans' attitude here. All right, we're ready at the 40-yard line. Blunt, the quarterback, steps left, hands off to Kerry Porter. Porter slams in on the left side, and Kerry will take the ball out to the 44-yard line. So four more yards for Kerry Porter as he is now above 100 at 107 unofficially for the first half of this football game. Clock down to 15 seconds and holding at the moment as apparently we have a timeout call down on the field now to stop the clock with 15 seconds to go in the half. This is the same Arizona State defense that is ranked in the top 10 nationally against rushing, you know, the rushing average. I think they've only given up 85 yards 89. a game. Oh, 89. Okay, I'm sorry about that. Uh, <laughs> Kerry Porter already has 105 or 108 on the day, so he by himself has already crushed that average. This is not, we're not talking key sheeters out here. These people are tough, and they're chew chewing them up. Yeah, uh, Kerry has done extremely well. He's had a couple of big runs, which, of course, have helped get him to the 107, 108-yard total, but uh, however you get there, you get there. Well, I do appreciate you correcting me on all those things. Thank you, Bob. That's all right. I want to keep you on the straight and narrow. I, I can't away from the broadcast, <laughs> but I'll try when we're here. I wish those airplanes would quit flying right at us and turn in the headlights on as they come in. That uh, gets a little bit scary, and I'm not sure this one's going to make it over the rim of the stadium. There's one coming right at us now, and uh, he's got those lights on. He's going to come right through our booth, I'm afraid. So 15 seconds to go as the Cougars get ready to play. Ed Blunt with two men to the left side, two split backs behind him in the backfield. Four down linemen and everybody else dropped off for Arizona State. Blunt drops back, rolling out to the left side. Pringle blocking for him. Down the left side it goes. Taylor, it was deflected away at the last moment. That was a good defensive play for Arizona State as that ball was knocked away by Bernard Jones, the uh, rover back, the free safety. Nice job. Kitcher Taylor was wide open. Ed just rolled to his left side. Good blocking out there. Pringle knocked, knocked a couple Arizona State guys on their keister. Excellent read, but just a great play by the young man. They moved him in there. He was playing underneath coverage in the Arizona State secondary. He was just able to get a finger on that. I think his arm grew about eight feet on that swat. You know, a little while ago in the, boy, in the game, I mentioned this was baseball spring training country. I said, baseball, look who's in the booth. You Bobo bet. Brayton just walked in. He figured, wouldn't you? <laughs> All right, here we go. Third down now with eight seconds to go. Clock starts. Back blunt throws as his hand was hit, and the ball is incomplete. Overthrown meant for Michael James down at the 35-yard line. Pretty good rush from the outside by Arizona State that time, and it looked like Larry McLaughlin running a stunt coming around from the defensive right side from his nose guard spot got there to get just a little piece of Blunt's hand and deflect that throw before he could get it away. So Ed Blunt now is 3 for 11 in this first half for 52 yards. With uh, Washington State only having four seconds left, I think they're going to try one more shot. Just see what happens. You sure as heck don't want to punt it away to a returner that re averages 22.6 yards a pop. No way. If you just run the ball here, you could use up to four seconds. So now they go with no backs. Ed Blunt all by himself. Five receivers out. Back goes Blunt. Being chased now. Started right. Rolls back to the left. Got a great block on the play. Throws the ball downfield for the goal line. It is incomplete at the five-yard line. But Eddie Blunt scrambling around, got an outstanding block, and then threw the ball deep, just tried to get it down there. It's an incomplete pass, but time ran out on the play. And at halftime, the score here at Sun Devil Stadium in Tempe, Arizona, Washington State 14, Arizona State 14. And we'll be back to recap the first half of action right after timeout on this Cougar football broadcast. It's turned out to be a ball game here. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. <coughs> yeah, here they go. He's going to do it again. Yeah. 
Well, back here at Tempe, Arizona, we are underway and we are not in the second half. Nico Brastoff has kicked off, but the ball went out of bounds at the one yard line. And so they'll bring it back and he'll have to kick it again, this time from the Cougar 30 yard line. The new rule this year, of course, is that the kickoffs in college football come from the 35 in an effort to have more run backs forced to have that early action as the play gets underway. And I guess it has worked to a certain degree, but on a kickoff out of bounds, it puts the kicking team back to their own 30. And that's a long way from the goal line to have to kick that ball, Paul. That really is. This is where you have an opportunity if you're the receiving team to set up a return. You just hope that he doesn't kick a low worm burner because then that allow Arizona State to set up their return. It's tough on the Washington State kickoff team. They've taken some heat lately on their coverage. Thomason and Reynolds are the outside men for the Cougars on the run up by Obrastoff. He'll drive the knuckleball to the 20. It's going to the sidelines again. It's going to skid out and he's going back to the 25. So they'll go back to the 25 yard line this time for the kickoff as the flag flew at the eight yard line. What Obrastoff is trying to do is he's kicking to the corner. They're trying not, they're trying to take a little bit away from Arizona State. They don't want to just have it kick right down the middle because then Arizona State can set up a return center to the left or to the right. So what they're trying to do is force the defense or force the return. Unfortunately, they're forcing it back into their own territory. He's got to kick it off from the 25. Bruce Hill is the man they've been kicking towards. Let's see if they continue to do that now. Fullback uh, Channing Williams is the other deep man over on the far side from us, the receiver's left side. And now the restraining line is all the way up to the Cougar 35-yard line for Arizona State. And the Cougars kick off from their own 25 now. So out to the left comes Thomason. Artie Holmes inside him. And then Sean Landrum inside that. On the far side, on the, uh, the kicker's right, it is Ricky Reynolds. And then Irwin Chappelle. Here's the kick now downfield. A floater again. It'll bounce in the middle. Kick off to the right. Williams bobbles at the 15. Picks it up at the 14. Starts back upfield. He's at the 20. He's going to be hit there and skids away to the 24-yard line. So Channing Williams got it back out to the 24. And that's just about what you might have expected on the original kickoff. But they had to go through all those tries. That was the third kickoff. Boy, the kickoff team's going to have to come over and get oxygen. They're awfully tired. Very, very good special teams play because they only allowed Williams about six yards on the return. And the nice thing about that is Obrastoff kicked a worm burner. He made it tough for him to field. So it'll be first down 10 for Arizona State at their own 24-yard line. 14-14 the tie score now in this ball game as we start the second half. Signals called, and uh, Sperling is still at center. Here's the handoff to Harris, running to the left side, around the corner at the 25, the 30, breaks it up to the 40, 45. Tried to slip a tackle at midfield and got to the Cougar 49-yard line, and Kevin Thomason finally held on and dragged him down as he brought the ball to the Washington State. 49, that is a run of 27 yards and a first down. Very well executed by Arizona State. They went away from the strength of the Washington State defense, went to the weak side of the field, a couple of good blocks out there, one on Ricky Reynolds, one on Collins, and if it wasn't for Tomlinson, it was touchdown. Harris now at 96 rushing yards in this 14-14 tie. First down at the Washington State 49-yard line on the left hash mark. Wide men both ways, eye formation in the backfield. Signals called, Van Raphorst motion out to the left by Williams, pitch back to Harris running the left side, around the corner, got to the 45, and is rolled out of bounds at the Arizona State bench at the Washington State 43-yard line. And over to knock him out, Alapate, the middle linebacker, playing in place of Brian Ford, and also there for Washington State was Sean Landrum. So it'll be a gain down to the 43-yard line. That's a six-yard advance for Arizona State as they continue to move that ball. Harris carrying for six that time for Arizona State, 102 yards now on 15 carries. Second down and four at the 43. Wide side to the right, open side of the field to the right. Tight end has gone to the left. Eye formation in the backfield. Hand off to Harris. Starts right, winds it back into the middle and got over the 40-yard line, perhaps close to the 39. And leading the way, Brian Ford back in the ball game and Ivan Cook for the defensive end from the right side for Washington State. Put the ball on the 39-yard line. So Harris picks up another four yards on that play. It's nice to see Brian Ford back in the ball game. He went out early in the first quarter with a pinched nerve. Maybe they got him fired up and getting back in there because he is a force in the middle. Arizona State out of there now in that short yardage situation. Third down, about a yard to go. And they have the eye formation, two tight ends. Here's the handoff. Harris bangs into the middle behind the wedge blocking of the lineman. They'll force it forward down to about the 37-yard line. That should be good for a first down. 
Harris picks up two more. And for Harris now, 17 carries, 108 yards. He and Kerry Porter each at 108 yards in this ball game. At the present time, that's a first down. Well, he has 39 yards in the last four carries, so that's a pretty good indication of what they're doing. They're just running Harris behind that big block. They're trying to wear the Cougars down here. This is a big defensive series for Washington State. 14-14 the score, a tie ball game. Arizona State in the eye with two tight ends and one wide man out to the right side. Signals called, Van Raphorst fakes the pitch, hands the ball off to the fullback instead, that little trap on the inside, and the fullback Channing Williams slanting off the left side. That was pretty good play action uh, by the quarterback that time. He faked the wide pitch and instead slapped the ball in the belly of the fullback, and Channing Williams carried it across the 35 down to the 34, so a three-yard advance for Channing Williams, and it'll be second down and seven for Arizona State. Ball on the left hash mark. They have open side to the right, sidelines to the left, as they come out, Aaron Cox split off to the left side, and they also split a man, Chris Garrett, out to the right side. Eye formation. Van Raphorst now on the fake draw, throws over the middle. That is caught, intercepted by Brian Ford. Ford dropping off from the middle linebacker's spot, make a diving reception for Washington State. And the young man from San Laurent, Quebec, is ecstatic about that one. Boy, about the only thing he's ever had to pick off up in Canada are snowballs. He did a great job of scooping that one off the natural turf, pulled that thing in there. His arms extended about four feet, it looked like. That was a poorly thrown pass by Van Rapport. That was way underthrown. A nice interception, third interception on the night for Washington State, and the defense has made the big plays thus far. Well, that is a very big one indeed because they stopped the drive in that possession. And now the Cougars break out of that huddle. They will send Kittrick Taylor wide to the left side from their own 22-yard line. Well, since the tight end will be on the left, wing back to the left side. Now motion through from right to left by Victor Wood. Here's the turn. Blunt hands the ball off to the lone running back. And he is spun around and thrown down for a loss on the play. That's Kerry Porter back to perhaps the 21-yard line. Kerry got the ball, dropped it to 21, so he loses one, and he's back now to 107 for the ball game. Washington State was trying to outflank Arizona State. They ran a trips formation to the left, and they also overbalanced, but then they came back with a counter to the right side, no gain. Cougars break out of that huddle, second down 11 now on the right hash mark. They send two men wide side to the left, split the two backs behind Ed Blunt. He'll take the ball, roll to the left side. Blunt looking for opening to run up field. He's at the 20, ducks back in toward the middle and got to around the 23 or 24 yard line, but that's about as far as he's going to go as the Arizona State defense rallied well to the ball at that point. The tackle led by Greg Clark, who was up there first. They'll put it down at the 23 yard line. So Blunt picks up two for Washington State. Ed Blunt on the run a two-yard gain he has rushed now for 54 yards in this ball game net despite one seven-yard loss in the first half of the game Cougars are third down and nine at their own 23 motion out of the backfield left by Kingstead back goes blunt throws up over the middle the ball is intercepted no it's incomplete Arizona State man had it. It was intended for the tight end, Doug Wellsent, the freshman from Ritzville, a redshirt freshman. Bounced off his hands as it was thrown, Paul, I think, high and hard, and almost picked off by Arizona State by Anthony Parker, but he couldn't hold on. And you can hear the crowd is very excited about that because their favorite special teams player is back in there getting ready to return the punt, Eric Allen. He is a scary man back there. So way back deep he goes, and now ready to do the kicking for Washington State. Here's Myers. The snap is back. Here's the kick. Gets it up high high in the air, a floater, kind of end over end, up to the 45-yard line for a fair catch comes Anthony Parker, and he will take the ball there, and they'll put it down, actually at the 44-yard line, so it'll go over to Arizona State at their own 44, first down, 10 yards to go. This is a 14-14 ball game, Washington State and Arizona State in the third quarter. Arizona State has really had the advantage of nice field position here, starting this drive on the 44. They're doing a lot of things. They're pushing Washington State back in their own territory. That makes it tough to work offensively. The Cougars have Tony Savage, the big uh, redshirt freshman out of San Francisco's Reardon High School, back in that defensive line now. The big kid is 6'3", 282 pounds, and very mobile for a young man of that size, and he's back in there playing now for the Cougars here in the second half on defense. And you can start seeing Washington State alternating some of those offensive and defensive linemen. They don't have an awful lot on the offensive side, but they're trying to keep fresh people in there because Arizona State has a tendency to beat on those guys. They always come out of this game about two inches shorter than when they went into it. I can 
about that. I was 6'7 when I started playing. Uh, yes, okay. Marvin Adams and Chris Hiller are the outside men on the defensive front four for the Cougars. Tony Savage and Mark Ledbetter are the inside men playing as the defensive tackles for the Cougars. At the linebacker spots, Maury Metcalf is on one side now. And in the middle is uh, Tuna Alapate back into the ball game once again. And I'll check Bob Gregory as the third linebacker. The secondary core, Landrum and Reynolds on the corners. Collins rotating up onto the line of scrimmage from one of the safety spots now. As signals are called, first down at the 44. There's a deep handoff given off to Harris, scrambling on the left side. And an excellent play by Harris as he was tripped and stumbled at the line of scrimmage but fell forward across the 50. But they're going to bring him back. They see his knee hit down at the 48. Looked like he used one of the Washington State defensive players as kind of a springboard. He bounced off the guy's back, kept going. But he has excellent balance. He's shown that balance all night long. He's having himself a pretty darn good football game. 112 yards on 18 carries for Harris. Out goes Chris Garrett as a wide receiver now for Arizona State, and in comes Bruce Hill, tonight's co-captain. Over the ball at center is backup center Steve Sperling, replacing Kevin Thomas, who was hurt in the first half. I formation now behind Van Raphorst. Jeff with a ball, the sprint draw fake. Back he goes to pass. Double pumps, throws over the middle. That ball caught by Harris out of the backfield down to the Cougar 44-yard line. Harris, who came storming up the middle, they faked the sprint draw to him, and after the Cougars read that he didn't have the ball, he managed to slip loose to the 44-yard line and catch that uh, football thrown to him for a gain on the play of eight yards. Well, you hope on that situation that your defensive lineman can knock him off balance or try to knock him out of the pass route because everybody's flying out of there in a zone defense like that makes it tough to cover that underneath. That area is open. That's a first down for Arizona State in this 14-all third quarter. Cougars dig in on defense at their own 44-yard line. Van Raphorst with one back behind him. A lineman on the left side moved and got knocked flat on his back. Danny Villa, a 6'6", 293-pound senior from Nogales, got uh, himself creamed on that one. He uh, made that little jump, and the Cougar defensive lineman, uh, who was it, Hiller? Yeah, <laughs> Hiller just hit him. Uh, he came up with both forearms under his mask that time and knocked him flat on his back. That's kind of fun for the defensive player because that's your basic, legitimate, cheap shot because <laughs> he moved, he comes over, and he looked like a little raggedy and down, just kind of scurried about four feet off the ground, landing on his back so gracefully. Boy, can you imagine giving somebody a 293-pound <laughs> raggedy oh, and doll for I Christmas? Throwing my back out You're cruel is what you are. You're the saddest. <laughs> All right, they'll take the ball back now to the Cougar 49-yard line, so from there it'll be first down and 15. Here's the turn, the uh, handoff in the line of scrimmage now, and diving through on the left side, Channing Williams, the fullback, gets about a yard on the play, and the Cougars stack that one up. Bob Gregory was there for Washington State to lead the way, and they'll put it down at the Cougar 48-yard line, so only a one-yard advance by fullback Channing Williams, the junior from Sacramento. This is not that old a team at Arizona State. They have a lot of people who will be back for one and even two more years. And Williams and Harris, the two starting running backs, both will be back again next year. They're juniors. They're good ones. They're in an eye right now. Channing Williams in front of Daryl Harris in the tailback. Here's a uh, handoff given to Harris. Fakes in, turns out to the right. Straight arm stumbles as he had his feet knocked out from under him. He went sprawling forward down near the Cougar 40-yard line. As the tackle was made that time by Maury Metcalf. Maury got him about six, seven yards back up the field, and he stumbled forward down to the 41-yard line. That was the world's longest free jump. He just took his legs out, and he just seemed to propel himself right over the air, picked up seven yards, and I don't know how he did that. I would have landed flat on my face. You'd have probably broken your nose if you did. Thanks, Bob. Yeah, all right, Paul. That's fine. I <laughs> You have to play rugby at your age. Yes, <laughs> Split backs now behind the quarterback. Van Raphorst, whose daddy played at Ohio State. He was a kicker. Back to pass goes Van Raphorst with no fake. Sets up deep. Here comes the rush. He throws. It's intercepted. Picked off at the Cougar 35-yard line. Collins over the 50, in toward the middle, down to the 40. And Ronnie Collins is down at the 40-yard line with the Cougars' fourth interception of the night. Washington State, and there go the Arizona State Boo Birds. They've started. Oh, boo, please boo. Great pressure by... Washington State on the defensive line that time. Cleveland was in there. Ledbetter, Downing did a great job. They really got Van Raphorst's face. He just threw the ball in there. Beautiful coverage by Collins. Fourth pick of the night. Wow. This is an Arizona State team, Paul. It had given up only one turnover in its first two games against Michigan State and Southern Methodist. They're going to put the ball between the 39 and 40-yard line. They're showing statistically on the board the 40, but now I think we have a timeout on the field. Looking down to see what uh, Jim Springer is having to say down there. Uh, he says, first down, Washington State. 
but he had some other message to impart to us as well. That's a double dip on the interception. Collins did a great job of reading that. Broke underneath, but what it also did, it puts Washington State in great field position. The ball's inside the 40. It turns it around because Arizona State was inside the Cougar 50-yard line. That's a big turnover. That is a very, very big turnaround. Cougars will have the ball now. Allen Boatman over the ball at the 39 and a half yard line. Wide men both ways. Blunt with split backs behind him at the Arizona State 39. Back goes Eddie Blunt. Sets up. Hard throw. Taylor diving at the 32 yard line to make the catch just inside the sidelines. So Kittrick Taylor on a seven yard passing gain. And the Cougars up until that point had only one yard of offense in this second half. But the defense had done the job. And now they go to work on offense through the air. Picking up seven yards on that play from Ed Blunt to Kittrick Taylor. And that is the first completion after five incompletions in a row for Ed Blunt. He sets him again. Back he goes to set up. Now he's going to run it up into the middle. Throws deep down the right side. Diving catch. Completed at the seven-yard line. I think that's Wilson who caught the ball. A redshirt freshman tight end. An outstanding basketball as well as football player at Ritzville High School. Doug Wilson. A diving catch at the two. It is first down and goal. What a great story about Wilson out of Ritzville High School. I saw him play in the State B a couple of years. Great athlete. But you've got Olsen out. You also have another tight end that's out. So they've lost two tight ends. He came in into camp number three beautiful catch that was behind him nice diving catch the cougars are knocking on the door once again a 30 yard gain a first down 14 all tie first and goal wilson set to the left now motion through the backfield right to left by kittrick taylor here's a pitch by blunt to porter running to the left side looking for a block turns at the five he's at the four scrambling and struggling and may have gotten to the three yard line Kerry Porter, who has gone over 100 yards in the first half, takes the ball from the seven down to the three. That is a four-yard rushing gain for Kerry Porter of Washington State. And the Cougars continue to move it along on the ground. Porter's first carry, check it, second carry of this half. He has 111 yards now. And you could just hear the pins dropping in the stadium here. They're saying, now these guys were supposed to crush. What's the story? Well, they better start crushing pretty soon, or they're going to be behind. Wilson is on the right on the right side now. Ball at the three and a half. Wood goes through left to right in motion. Pitch to Porter, going to try right, wind it back, fights his way down inside the two near the one-yard line. Kerry Porter on the carry as he started wide right and then cut sharply back behind the blocking on that side of Chris Dyko and Mike Utley and took the ball down, I think, inside the two. Maybe they'll put it right on the two-yard line. Again, Washington State went to that unbalanced line. They had a trip formation motioned in to a formation. What they're trying to do is overbalance the line against Arizona State. That time, Kerry cut it back in there two yards away from Pater. Third down and goal at the two. The ball right in front of the goal post. Cougars, wide receivers both ways. Tight end to the left, split backs. Blunt sets him. Kittrick Taylor motion left to right through the formation. Here's the turn. Fake to Kingstead diving. Blunt takes the ball, dives. He's at the goal line. He is there, but is he in? He is right at the goal line. The Cougar players have their arms up. The officials are saying fourth down. As Ed Blunt tried to struggle in, part of Ed Blunt made it to the end zone. The ball did not. So Arizona State has stopped him at the goal line. Ed Blunt carrying, twisting, and spinning. He tried. Now, one more effort by Blunt, but I think they had blown the whistle at that point. He is just inches short on that try. Ed Blunt with the ball. Stacey Harvey, number 57, made a great play because he pulled Blunt's head back. Had he been able to get that over, it was touchdown. Fourth down. It's everybody up now standing and yelling for Arizona State. 70,000 of them. Ball six inches away, fourth down. Blunt with the ball. Rolls back deep right, throws end zone. Touchdown, Washington State. Doug Wilson on his knees in the end zone, and the Cougars mob him. Washington State has the lead, 20 to 14 with 5. 31 to go in the ballgame, the third quarter of the ballgame. If anybody was a Holiday Bowl fan, that's the exact same play that they went for two against BYU. Rolled everybody out to the right side, had Arizona State shifted all the way over there, then threw completely back across the field to Wellstand, who was all by himself. Beautiful play. I like it. One yard touchdown pass. Paul, that was a two point conversion play. That sure was. They yeah. pulled that one right out of the book. All right, we're ready for the extra point try. Kevin Adams will kick the ball. Blunt will hold at the nine yard line. The lines are set. Snap back. Ball on the ground. Kick is up. It is good. Washington State adds the extra point. And with 5.31 to go in the third quarter, it is Washington State 21, Arizona State 14. And we take timeout on this Cougar football broadcast.
Okay, I got it. <laughs> All set. Okay. <coughs> The Cougars lead at 21 to 14. Paul, I understand things have just, the roof has gone off at Giovi's up in Pullman. Oh, they're blowing the <laughs> ceiling off all over the place. Nice job. Sixth place, 39 yards, three minutes, 11 seconds in terms of that scoring drive set up by the Collins interception. Fourth of the night on Van Rappel's. And the kickoff goes to the end zone. Channing Williams will down it there, and they'll bring it out to the 20-yard line. So it'll be first down 10 for Arizona State at their own 20. It is 21 to 14, Washington State. You know, it's interesting. People were wondering why the heck Jim Walden was going as nuts as he was because he saw talent in this club. Sure, there's 78 kids that are freshmen and sophomores. They're young. They're inexperienced, but all he wants them to do is play hard no matter what happens. Play your very best. That's his point. That's why he went after the regimented deal he did last week. You hear the cheer. Dan Ford is now at quarterback for Arizona State replacing Van Rapphorst. That's what the fans wanted. Ford will take his first snap. He lines up behind his uh, center now, Sperling at the 20-yard line. First down, 10. Eye formation, long count by the newcomer from Tulsa. Back he goes, hands off to a new tailback. Off the left side he goes, cuts it back up into the middle and carries the ball out over the 30-yard line. Paul Day carrying the ball for Arizona State and brought it out over the 30 for a first down at the 31-yard line. So Day, on his first carry of the night, picks up 11 and a rushing first down for the Sun Devils of Arizona State who have been stung by Washington State. And it's 21-14, to 14, the Cougars on top at the present time. All right, out of that huddle again come the Sun Devils in their maroon jerseys, yellow helmets, yellow numerals, yellow pants. Cougars dig in on defense. It is a first down in a 21-14 Cougar game. Here's the turn now, the handoff to Williams, the fullback. Puts his head down, just burrows into the pile, and picked up a yard or maybe two on the play before he disappeared. Brian Ford was there for the Cougars, defensively along with Marvin Adams. By the way, KWSU TV Sports covers all the Cougar games, shows them Tuesday nights between 8 and 10. And, of course, uh, Paul and I will do the, uh, the audio portion of that telecast, the play-by-play -play in color, on Northwest Public TV, KWSU, Channel 10 in Pullman. That's on Tuesdays between 8 and 10. All right, here come the Arizona State Sun Devils now. Second down and eight yards to go at their own 33-yard line. Signals called by Ford at quarterback. Fakes, drops back now, sets up after the play fake, throws over the middle. That ball is caught at the 50-yard line and hit immediately and down the receiver, Aaron Cox. He got forward progress to the Cougar, 49-yard line, and the fans are going wild. They found a new hero here at Tempe, Arizona. Well, they found a quarterback that was throwing to the right guy for a change. That, did, that time, all he did was run down, run a square in. Washington State was in his own formation. He had pretty good protection out there. He had all the time in the world. He had it. A receiver finally came open. Nice completion. Dan Ford, the new man, came over from Tulsa. He was there when John Cooper, the current Arizona State coach, was there. He was going to transfer elsewhere and then came to Arizona State. So he had redshirted last year. Now he's ready behind center once again. First down, his team down 21-14. The handoff to Williams, the fullback, submarined and down on the 50-yard line on a fine play. And the man who got there for Washington State was Tim Downing. He's the big freshman out of Durham, California. And I'll tell you, he's a dandy. He's a FFA member. Or he likes to swim. And that time, he just dove headfirst into the ankles of the ball carrier and threw him for a yard loss back to the 50. He likes to punch doggies, too, as they say. And that time, he just punched Williams right to the ground. He's had himself an excellent game. You've seen a real inspired effort by Washington State up front. They're putting a lot of pressure on the opposing quarterback, and it's something we've not seen thus far. Second 11 at the 50 now for Arizona State 319 to go in the third quarter Cougars lead four men down at the line here's the handoff today being pursued got around one man at the 50 down near the 45 yard line Hiller is there to knock him down also there was Ronnie Collins to get a piece of that as those two converged on him and Paul Day carried the ball down to the 45 just outside the 45 yard line for a short five yard gain for Arizona State and the Sun Devils now come to third down and about seven yards to go. Which Coach Co Cooper's doing is he's alternating his backs. Harris and Day trying to keep fresh backs and they're putting pressure on Washington State on the corner. Wide left goes Aaron Cox. Wide to the right side now goes Chris Garrett for Arizona State. Cougars moving around. Now the officials jump in and they're stopping everything. So let's see what the call is. As, uh, the umpire came racing into the ball to get things stopped. And apparently we have a timeout called on the field. So with two minutes and 40 seconds remaining to play in the third quarter, the score, Washington State 21, Arizona State 14. We take timeout on this Cougar football broadcast. Monday, September 29th, at 
Gonna go. Okay. okay, good. You mean we don't get to put one in if we steal the ball and score again? Huh. 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 No drop in? No. We'll have to work on that next year. No, let's stay away from them unless we have to. I, I have them in baseball. Like just an oh, awful how many we can try to get in. <coughs> Coogies are playing uh, Pentecostal. Yeah, there we are. Five defensive backs. <coughs> yep. We're in a robber package right now. Is that what it is? Cooper, the coach at Arizona State, is a worried, worried man on the sidelines. And his quarterback in there, Dan Ford, the young man who came over from Tulsa to follow him, 6'2", 211, a sophomore, comes back off the sidelines now. In 1984, when he enrolled as a freshman at Tulsa, Dan Ford was selected by Playboy magazine as the nation's freshman phenom. Wow. So you watch out for that young man. He now sets his team with split backs. Third down, seven. Back he goes. No fake. Look for the opening. He's going to run it up the middle. He's caught at the 45-yard line. And hauled down on the play. Marvin Adams, Bob Gregory for Washington State, and Rob Cleveland were all there. He took it to the 44. It's fourth down. And is this the field goal team coming? No. This is the punting team coming. Nice effort by Washington State. On that play, they blitzed. They had their robber package. Five defensive backs in there. Ron Collins blitzed from the backside. A lot of pressure on four. Mike Shue, the punter, will kick it away. Kittrick Taylor back to receive. There's the snap, the rush, and he almost got it blocked as uh, Chappelle, Erwin Chappelle, was there. The ball hits at the five, is going to be pushed to the sidelines and goes out of bounds somewhere inside the five-yard line. So the ball goes over to the Cougars in bad field position. Let's see where they put it. I think it was first touched up around the five-yard line, and that's probably where they're going to put it down. But Washington State, with a 21-14 lead, late in the third quarter, has the ball again back at the five-yard line. Beautiful punt by Arizona State. I mean, Chappelle missed that by the hair of my little chinny-chin-chin. Chin. <laughs> Had he been able to get that, it would have been a huge turnover for Washington State, but Arizona State pins the Cougs way down in their own territory at the five. Uh, that you're going to say by the hair of my now double chinny-chin-chin, chin, <laughs> but he wouldn't say a thing like well, that, I don't want to embarrass you. On the yeah, all right, thanks. You're down. You're a good kid. Thank you. <laughs> Ball is at the five-yard line. It'll be first down 10, Washington State. Ed Blunt at quarterback with split backs. Has twin receivers out to the left side now. Defense over shift. Back he goes to the five. Going to run it back up the middle. He's at the five and dives to the 10-yard line. Running the quarterback sneak. Paul, I don't think there was ever any intent to throw that ball. He just went back, planted the drive foot, and came right back up the middle. Well, he was really hoping, Coach Wallen on that play, was hoping that Arizona State was going to pin the ears back on the defensive lineman, send them flying in. That's exactly what happened. Blunt read it nicely, picked the ball up, got themselves out of some tough field position. Very, very interesting play. Good, good play calling by Jim Wall. Ed Blunt has rushed now for 60 yards in tonight's game. Kerry Porter, of course, over 100, as is Daryl Harris, who played tailback for Arizona State until the middle of this quarter. Here's Blunt rolling out to the left now, throws the ball, completed up over the 15 to the 18-yard line. That ball was caught by Rick Chase, the senior wide receiver, at the 18-yard line. He is down immediately, but the 8-yard gain will give the Cougars another first down, so they continue to move that football. Big series by Washington State. The big goal is when they give away awards, all these different awards for hits and interceptions, one of the awards they give away is for the offense ability to get out of tough field position. Anything inside the 20 is considered that. Blunt has now passed for 100 yards in the football game tonight. Cougars leading at 21 to 14, have the ball at their own 18 first down. James motion through to the right side. Blunt hands off to Porter, driving it straight ahead. He's up over the 20, got to the 21, and then the pile toppled over, and if they allow that forward progress, he's up around the 23. If they whistled it down, he'll be back around the 21. So let's see what they do with it now. As the uh, pile had formed, Porter was still struggling. They're going to put him down back at the 21-yard line. So Kerry picks up but three yards on that carry. But every bit of yardage back there is important now for the Cougars just to try to move it up the field. And if they do have to punt, they have some room from which to punt. Split backs behind Blunt, second down seven at the 21. Motion, Michael James, left to right through the backfield. Here's the counter option turn. Blunt runs right, tips to Tingstead, open around the right side, lost a shoe, and got to the 29, very close to a first down. There's a penalty marker down. 
There is a flag down back at the line of scrimmage. So let's see what that call is now. Here's Jim Springer says holding on Washington State. It'll wipe out a good run by Ed Tingstad, the young man from Bethel High School. Eddie, who played for uh, Dave Rostovsky out there at Bethel, was his high school student body president, had a 4-0 grade point average in the spring at Washington State. He has written national award-winning historical essays, and here he is playing football. You like that. That's the kind of quality kid that are always involved in this goofy game. And he probably even dated the head cheerleader. Does that sound correct? Yeah, probably did. And then I suppose his brother Mark did the next year after he graduated. Sure, <laughs> keeping it all in the family. <laughs> and they're both here tonight. Mark, a backup linebacker for Arizona State. So they'll take the ball back now. And uh, they'll take it back to the Washington State 12-yard line. So for the Cougars back there, it'll be second down at the 12. They've got to come out to the 29. So 17 yards to go. Terry Porter is in that running backfield now, and I think that Pringle has come in to run with him. Signals called now by Ed Blunt. Wide receivers on both sides. James in motion through to the right. They're both on the right. Here's the fake, the hand to Porter. Up the middle he goes, takes it over the 15 to about the 16-yard line. May have bumped down at the 15, according to the side official on the near side. And we'll see what they give him on forward progress. But it was Kerry Porter again. Back to the 15 for three more yards for Washington State. And for Kerry now, with those three, 118 yards. Casey Harvey for Arizona State was staying tough in there. Really forced it back inside. And the third quarter comes to an end. And who anywhere, either coast, north, or south, would have picked this score if they were picking in a pool at the end of three periods? The score at the end of three here at Sun Devil Stadium in Tempe. Washington State, 21. Arizona State, 14. And we take time out on this Cougar football broadcast. <laughs> The Washington State Cougars at third down now at their own 15-yard line. Third and 14. Big play coming for Ed Blunt and the Cougars. Two receivers to the left side, split back. Motion out of the backfield. Tingstad to the right. Back goes Blunt. No fake. Going to run it up to the right side. Lobs the ball for Tingstad. Leaping catch out over the 35 to the 37-yard line. Ed Tingstad went airborne to catch that ball, but there's a flag down back near the line of scrimmage once again. And I think it's against the Cougars once again. Here comes Jimmy Springer, the referee, holding for the second time, Paul, in this possession. And the Cougars against Arizona State can ill afford bullets in the big toe. Oh, that's unfortunate. Tingstad made a great catch. He just came out of the backfield, motioned down the side. Blunt bought himself some time, allowing Tingstad to run down the sidelines. Came in there, really took a shot from the free safety, Anthony Parker, who came in there and just hammered him. Tingstad's coming off the sidelines, shaking his fingers. You know, think about that. You can call holding on pretty much any play. Unfortunately, they called it both times. Tingstad had nice effort. He did. They wiped out a couple of great statistical uh, adventures for Ed Tingstead. One on the run on the option, and now the great airborne diving catch. That'll take the ball back to the Cougar nine-yard line. And I would think for practical purposes, you have to be thinking in terms now of the defense once again having to do the job. They have one more play on offense. Here comes Wood. Here comes Taylor. They'll come in now to join Eddie Blunt, and Taylor brings the play to the huddle as he comes in. Uh, try to look for maybe something conservative here, but the way things have been going, throw it out the window. Might do. They send two men wide to the left. Kittrick Taylor way out, and uh, Victor Wood slotted inside. Split running backs. Pringle is in there now, and he'll come out to the right in motion. Signals called. Back goes Blunt. He's going to run it up in the middle at the 10. At the 15 to the 17-yard line goes Eddie Blunt. He brought it out for an eight-yard gain. That gives the Cougars a little bit of breathing room in which to get away the kick. And that's exactly what they were trying to do so they would not be lining up in the end zone to do the kicking. So 68 yards rushing now for Ed Blunt in this football game on 10 carries. So Eddie Blunt has done an outstanding job both on the ground and through the air. And now the Cougars will kick it away. And here is Rob Myers. The snap back from Scholes. A rush on. He got it away. Down he goes. But they say no roughing. Ball hits at midfield. Going to roll to the four. 45 and is killed there by Scholes. The center covers the ball at the Arizona State 43. A wave just rolled over, and Jim Walden, hands on hips, is looking out at the field. He can't believe that there was no flag for roughing the kicker on that call. Well, I don't know. I don't know what you were looking at, but I didn't see anybody get their hands on. Okay, maybe I'm in the wrong position, but I'm standing right up here. And it was interesting. They brought Wellstand in there. Wellstand was the kicker. He was the guy to come and kick the ball. They hammered him. I mean, it was even close. Well, they'll put the ball at the Arizona State 44-yard line, and here we go. Arizona State ball are in an eye formation. 
The quarterback is Dan Ford now calling the plays. He moved into the number two spot only this week. The pitch fake to the tailback. He'll roll back to the right, throws the ball upfield. Diving catch. Is it held at the Cougar 46? Yes, it is. A fine play as the receiver had to curl back inside and make that catch. It was Stein Koss, the tight end, who made the catch at the Washington State. 46-yard line, 10 yards on the pass. That is good for a first down, and Arizona State has a little bit better than 100 yards of offense now in the second half of this ball game. The Sun Devils going to the air once again are now six for 15, and five of them have gone for first downs, but they've had four intercepted. It is 21-14, Washington State. Sun Devil ball, split backs. Ford at quarterback, the call, tight end to the right. He has the ball now, hands off to Harris, starting to the right side, not going to get very much, maybe to the 45-yard line, as he tried to hurdle and high step into the right side of the offensive line, and the Cougars pretty well cut him down there. Alapate led the way. Marvin Adams was there for Washington State. Adams out of Modesto, California. Alapate, to now, is from Union City. California. Interesting play again. Washington State came with a blitz. They sent seven guys on there playing man for man on the corners. Caught Harris and really pinned him in there, knocking him down for no gain. Harris actually picked up about a yard. He's 120 yards in the ball game now with the ball at the 45-yard line. It's on the right hash. They have wide side to the left. High formation stacked up. Here's Ford to the ball to Harris up the middle on that big block in the middle. He's at the 40, bounced off a tackle 35 and takes the ball inside the Cougar 35 down to between the 32 and 33-yard line. Artie Holmes was there, Alapati was there to make the stop for Washington State. And they're going to put the ball down now. It looks like at about the 32 and a half yard line. So a call back when the 32 and a 13 yard run for tailback Harris. And a first down, the tenth on the ground for Arizona State. Just credit Harris with that play. He broke a couple of tackles at the line of scrimmage. Washington State had him pinned in there, but he made the nice effort on the run. Cougars lead 21 to 14 here in the fourth quarter of the game. Arizona State on the march at the Washington State 32 with a first down. Signals called. Ford. Harris dropped the ball. I think they wanted to run a reverse that time as they had somebody coming from the right side. But as Harris had, took the handoff, perhaps Paul, he looked up to see who was coming from out of the right side, and he dropped the ball. And fell on it back at the 37-yard line for a five-yard loss. Looks like Aaron Cox was the split end who was coming in motion. He kind of looped around there. It looked like they were going to run the reverse that time. Harris did the smart thing, though. When you fumble the ball, the thing you cannot afford is a turnover. He just pounced on it, lost a few yards, but gave him another chance to come back after. Second down and 15 for Arizona State at the Washington State 37-yard line. Now they go to the shotgun with Ford as the deep man in the middle. Snap is back. Back he goes to pass. Pretty good protection. Rush in the middle. A throw. Harris, there's a flag down as Harris caught it, took it over the 30 down to about the 28-yard line. And we have a flag down in the backfield now, holding against Arizona State. So wipe out the pass. They will bring it back. So what happened to the Cougars twice on their last possession, deep in their own end, now happens to Arizona State outside the 40-yard line. Good coverage again by Washington State, but excellent pressure by the Cougar defensive line. They're really getting in there, and they're doing a lot more stuff. They're stunting underneath. They're looping guys around. They're trying to confuse Arizona State. This is an experienced offensive line. They're not playing, you know, this isn't little kitty football. You go down to the turnpike, turn left, and catch the ball at the blue Chevy. These guys know what they're doing, and Washington State's done an excellent job up front in confusing the blue Chevy, huh? Yeah, right up there. <laughs> yeah, okay, all right. The <laughs> uh, ball is back to the 47-yard line after the... Uh, are there any stud muffins stacked up outside the blue Chevy? Huh? <laughs> the ball is back to the 47-yard line. Arizona State now second down and cross-country mileage to go, about 27 yards. Signals called, split backs. Ford under his center to call the play, has it. Gives to Harris, running left with blockers. Around the corner, 45-40, 35, dives down to the 32-yard line. So he got an awful lot of that back. As he took it down to the 32, that is a 15-yard run by, Ford the t or by Harris, I'm sorry, the tailback. Harris took it down to the 32-yard line. So for Harris, 15 yards, not nearly enough for a first down because of the uh, penalty that preceded and the fumble before that. But Harris with 15 has run for 143 yards unofficially in the game. Now the shotgun. Third down 10 at the Cougar 32-yard line on the left hash. Snap back. Here goes Ford. Here comes the rush. He's chased out of there. Got away from Cook. Throws on the run. Incomplete. Ball off the fingertips of his intended receiver. 
The Cougars got great pressure on. Artie Holmes was covering Day on the run on the uh, pass as he ran out toward the sidelines on the left side. And the pass fell incomplete for Arizona State. And so the Cougars now forced them to fourth down and ten. Washington State went to a robber defense that time. They brought seven defensive backs in, blitzed both Ronnie Collins and Ronnie Lee. They came flying in there, and they really... Uh, you have to credit Forder with making a great play because he was sacked, got the ball away, and at least kept them in a position that if they want to kick a field goal, they can. I don't think they're good at it. No, I don't think so. Not at this point in the game. They're back in the shotgun on fourth and ten at the Cougar 32-yard line. Four down linemen for Washington State. Here they come again. The penalty markers are down, and they have blown the play dead. That would perhaps indicate illegal procedure movement on the offensive line, and I think that's what it is. And that's going to take it back another five yards to the 37-yard line, if that's the case. The Cougars showed blitz. Everybody started. And uh, I'll tell you a little story about the Cougar defense today. They worked on it hard. They took over one of the one of the dining rooms at the hotel. We were staying at the Mountain Shadows Resort. And for about 45 minutes, they lined up linemen on their knees in offensive positions and made defensive calls and had the defensive group walk through what they had to do, the, the holes they had to shoot for to get in there. Ball back at the 37-yard line. It's worked so far tonight. Now they're going to punt. Snap back the shoe. Here's the kick, angling it off to the right side, way back into the corner. It's going to go out of bounds, up around the five or six-yard line. They're going to signal it. Now the official coming up the sidelines to the seven, and he's going to mark it at the seven-yard line. So once again, Paul, the Cougars are going to start with bad field position, but I'd rather start with bad field position and a seven-point lead than the other way around. Exactly. Mike Shue did a nice job punting for Arizona State. He went for the coffin corner. Washington State was in their defense, making sure that they were not going to fake the ball. But credit the Cougar defense again. They moved him around a little bit. They, they moved him up and down the field. But when they've had to come up with a big plays, four interceptions on the night, keeping him out of the end zone, they've done it. Ed Blunt remains at quarterback for Washington State. He'll take over now with his team on the seven yard line it'll be a first down 10 for the Washington State Cougars now wait a minute what have they done with the yard marker on the far side it looks like they've got it back almost to the five although they don't see the ball down there they haven't placed that have they yes they have it's on the five yard line so they've moved it back they had it on the five originally they moved it up to the seven and now they've gone back to the five so the Cougars start at the five yard line ball on the left hash mark and they'll have wide side to the right sidelines to the left as they come out moving in front of us from north to south left to right with a 21 14 lead the sun devils have done an excellent job of playing defensive football what they're doing is they're keeping washington state pinned down in their own area they're putting their offense in positions to come back with good field position all right here come the cougars out of the huddle they will go trips left into the sidelines that's an unusual formation and the tight end is to the right one running back here's motion through by chase to the right side the pitch to porter running right trying to get to the wide side bounced off some tacklers and scrambled to the 11-yard line so Kerry Porter picks up six hard-earned yards out to the 11 before the Arizona State Sun Devils managed to get him on the ground. Larry McLaughlin, the nose guard, and they say at the 10 is where he hit down. So make it a five-yard Kerry Porter run. And for Kerry with the five, 123 yards rushing in this football game. He has done an outstanding job against an Arizona State team that had given up an average of 89 a game against their other foes. Now again, trips right. And a single running back. And Stallworth goes in motion through to the left. The fake now to Porter. The give to Porter. Drags it out to the 15-yard line. And he will be very close to a first down. See where they put him down on forward progress? No, they're going to put him just inside the 15. So he will be about a foot short after another five-yard gain. Kerry Porter on the carry for Washington State. And the ball at the 15-yard line. The nice thing about this drive, if Washington State's able to pick up a first down, they have two things going for them. One, they have a seven-point lead. Two, they keep the clock going. Nine minutes and 13 seconds remaining. The clock is running at the moment. It is third down, a foot to go for the Cougars, just inside their own 15 on the right hash. Timeout called by Ed Blunt. Blunt stepped back. He didn't like the defense he saw and the play he had called, and he took a timeout. With 9.05 to go, it's Washington State 21, Arizona State 14, and we take timeout on this Cougar football broadcast. You might have to buy me some time getting down to the field at the end of the game. I'm going to get down to the locker room. Okay. Yeah. You might want to go down.
soon as that final gun goes, you go and try to get on that first elevator going down. Okay. Will you bring my, my briefcase down? Or? Yeah. 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 Got five minutes to station ID, too. Okay. Yes. The Cougars came out of the huddle to the ball at the 15-yard line. The crowd immediately rose vociferously to the occasion, all 70,698 of them. And the Cougars have promptly backed off into their huddle again, and the officials try to get things quieted down. Now, Washington State, with the ball on the right hash mark at their own 15, will come out, trips right, three receivers into the short side, the sidelines on their right. Terry Porter, the lone running back. They only need a foot to get a first down. Chase in motion out to the left side. Rick on the go. Blunt quarterback sneak. Picks up a couple to the 17 and a first down. So Ed Blunt just put his head down behind center Alan Boatman and guards Paul Wolf and Mike Utley and carried that ball forward. And Boatman is the only senior in the interior offensive line. Very young interior offensive line. Nice job of blocking that time. Arizona State was running a 4-3. They were stacked over the guards and over the tackles. Ed had a nice little running room in there right up the middle. Alan Boatman did a nice job of blocking. Ball at the 17-yard line. Cougars lead 21-14, to down to 8.49 to go in the ball game. Signals called, trips right. Here's the quick pitch. Porter running the right side, looking for a block, scrambling as he got near the 19-yard line and grabbed around the ankles by Darren Willis, the safety man out of Santa Monica, California. Put him at the 19, a two-yard advance for Kerry Porter as the Cougars continue to try to move that ball on the ground, keep the clock rambling along. So the ball at the 19, second down and eight, still on the right hash mark. Now the Cougars go receivers wide side. They change the philosophy a bit here at second and eight. Three men to the left, Chase a wing, and two wide receivers outside him. Back with the ball, Blunt going to roll behind it all to the left. Now reverses, coming back, throws upfield, Wilson on the 20. Wilson ran over an official, took it out around the 21-yard line, and should be about a yard short of a first down. Freshman tight end, Doug Wilson from Ritzville, to the 21-yard line. Check it, 26-yard line. So a gain on the play of seven. Wilson was not the primary receiver on that play. They were trying to go to the trip side, but all three of those guys were covered. Ed was going to roll out there. Good pressure by Arizona State on the end. He saw it, looped back inside, hit Wilson. Very, very nice play. Blunt has now completed his last five in a row after missing five straight. Now he has split backs behind him, two receivers to the left side. Tight end to the right, back he goes, no fake. Pump fake left, throws the ball deep, and he overthrew Cotton Sears. Into double coverage of sorts as Sears tried to break between Anthony Parker and Darren Willis down the left side. And Blunt laid that ball right out on a rope, but the rope was a bit high, and the pass incomplete. That breaks his string of five in a row. They were hoping in that situation that Arizona State was going to be flying up, maybe jump on the shortstop, get a long gainer on third and one. So now the Cougars are faced with a fourth down yard to go situation. And at this end of the field, at this point in the game, 7.28 to go, they have little choice but to line up at least in punt formation. Perhaps they will try to uh, hold off a little bit on the snap now and hope that Arizona State will jump offside. Arizona State with four men back, seven on the line of scrimmage. They want to return, and they'd like to bring it up the middle if they can. Here's the snap back now, and here's the kick. Myers gets it up in the air. Good kick this time. Driving Parker back to his 35. Has the ball, starts left, got spun around, got to the 40, to the 43-yard line, and down he goes. Finally dragged down as he brought it back to the 43. The Cougars got good pressure on him, and the tackle for Washington State finally made by Jeff Loomis. Nice punt that time, really putting Arizona State in a situation of being on the defensive. Kicked the ball, almost kicked the ball out of coverage, but good coverage. You can tell that Washington State has worked very hard on their special teams all week long. Another situation, I think if Arizona State goes and scores, they're going to go for two because they're not going to want to tie. There's too much at stake. Van Raphorst is back at quarterback wow. for Arizona State. And you may have heard the crowd reaction in the background. Some like it, some don't. And I think John Cooper has himself a quarterback problem. Well, talk about the two quarterback situation. Arizona State's got one now. Yeah, it's one thing to have a two quarterback system as the Cougars have had, uh, even have now with the possibility of Tim Rosenbaugh coming in. But I think in Arizona State, you have a quarterback controversy right now that John Cooper is going to have to deal with. And uh, the fans here are going to choose upsides. And they've done that before, and they've caused all sorts of problems in the Arizona State program. 
We have a brief break in play now as Brian Ford on the sidelines comes into the ball game to call the defensive plays for Washington State. And the uh, Cougars, during this timeout, gather back uh, just outside the 45-yard line. The ball is nosed up just short of the 44 for Arizona State on their left hash mark. They're moving right to left from south to north. By the way, the Cougars play host to Oregon State next Saturday at Martin Stadium, but that game goes at 2.30 and our broadcast at 2 o'clock. All right, we're ready. Eye formation behind Van Raphorst, the quarterback. He sets him now, takes the snap, fakes the pitch, drops straight back. Going to throw the home run ball. Left side has a man deep. He's got him at the five. A pass complete to Aaron Cox down the left sideline. And now Van Raphorst is back. Cox is shaken up as he rolled to the goal line. He caught that ball at the five, hit down at about the four-yard line of Washington State. So, a 52-yard pass play right on the money by Jeff Van Raphorst, his first good pass of the night. You can't credit. That was just a great run-pass-catch combination. Washington State was in a zone formation. They were just trying to play against the deep one. Van Raphorst had a lot of time. He threw that thing on a string, caught Cox in perfect stride. I mean, you just can't cover that stuff. It's so tough. Got to credit Van Raphorst for having a tough night throwing four interceptions coming back here. First and goal, Arizona State at the Cougar four-yard line. Motion now as they have two tight ends and eye formation up the middle. Harris, and he goes to the two-yard line, fumbled the ball. There's a wild scramble for it. Let's see who has it. I think they say at Arizona State has possession that Harris was down with the ball in possession, and the Sun Devils retain it just outside the two-yard line. Daryl Harris, the tailback, sliding into the left side, got hit hard. Ivan Cook went after the ball. Ricky Reynolds diving in after it, but they say it was down at the two-yard line. No so way. a two-yard advance, and it will be second down and goal to go as Harris picked up the two and has 145 yards rushing in this game. Second and goal at the two on the left hash mark. Motion now through left to right for the wing back. Handoff. Harris off the right side. His hit short of the goal line. Drag back. Alapati was there. For, and uh, also there, Brian Ford. The two middle linebackers both in in the goal line set. And Harris got down to the one-yard line. One additional yard. And it is third and goal and goal line stand time. Boy, unbelievable. Big, big series here. Third and one. You got three guys hammering Harris. This is a situation... <laughs> This is what make, makes ball games so much fun to call. Arizona State goes to a two fullback set as Tupper and Williams are the running back split. They have a wing back right, two tight ends. Van Rapport's quarterback turns, gives off. Williams drives the right side. Touchdown, Arizona State. Just did get there off the right side. Channing Williams. A one-yard run for Arizona State with 5.32 to go. Now, do the Sun Devils, the heavy favorites, go for one or two? They're going for one, or at wow. least that's the indication. They will go for one point and try to tie the Washington State Cougars. In to do the kicking, Kent Bostrom. The lines are set. They're ready. They'll put it down on the 10, the snap, the spot. The kick is up high and over end. It is good. And so, with five minutes and 32 seconds remaining in the ballgame, the score is tied. Washington State 21, Arizona State 21, and we take time out on this Cougar football broadcast. Williams, Channing Williams, one yard. Station ID. Oh, yeah. We're late. <coughs> we'll get it as soon as we can get back.
Ready for the kickoff. Here is the run forward now by Joe Sullivan. A little short chip shot kick down the right side. Ball is taken back at the 10 yard line by James Hasty. Upfield slipped a tackle at the 15 to the 20 21. And he goes down there. It'll be first down for the Cougars. And we take 10 seconds for station identification. This is the Cougar Football Network. Tempe, Arizona, Bob Robertson, Paul Sorensen, producer engineer Vince DeMero. The Cougars in a tie ball game with Arizona State, 21 all, 5.26 to go in this football game. Cougars have it at their own 21 yard line, first down 10. Over the ball at center, senior Alan Boatman. It is Ed Blunt at quarterback, split backs Tingstead and Porter behind him. Michael James in motion through to the left side. The turn, the fake to Porter, pitch to Tingstead running left around the corner at the 25 yard line goes Ed Tingstead of Washington State and is finally dragged down on the play by Darren Willis. Willis made the stop as Tingstead took the pitch on the option and swept it around the left side to the 25 yard line. So the Cougars pick up four, it is second down and six. What Washington State is, is hoping to do is put themselves in a position taking a nice long drive, getting down there, kicking a field goal, maybe getting out of this thing with a 24-21 W, but you gotta start with those first downs. You do, you've gotta get out of your own end first and it may take some chances to do that. Two men split right, one to the left as they change the set of receivers. Motion through to the right by Chase, it's trips right. Here's the counter option turn, run to the right, Blunt. Pitches late to Porter who had to reach back for the ball, got it and took it over the 30 just short of a first down. That, Paul, was an outstanding play by Kerry Porter. That pitch came very, very very late from Blunt, and Porter, who lost his helmet on the tackle, had to turn back to catch that ball. Very dangerous play. That's a situation where a defensive back or linebacker, if he can read that, picks the ball off and runs in for a touchdown. You're either a hero or a goat on the deal. Nice job. Kerry Porter's got to get his helmet reshaped or something, because they're ripping that thing off their left and right. That tells you the ferocity of the tackling out there. They measure to see how far it is for the first down, and he's about the length of the football, perhaps a bit more short of the first down. The tail of the ball is right on the third yard line for a five yard gain and they must go about another half yard almost to the 31. So here come the Cougars on a very very big third down play. They're ready now with split backs. It is Porter Tingstad in the backfield split. James in motion to the left side. Three receivers out to the left. Quarterback Keith Blunt drives it to the 31. That's a first down. Washington State, I'm sure, has the first down as Ed Blunt took the ball, slid to his right behind big Mike Utley, the 286-pound sophomore, and took it to the 31-yard line. Very key play by Ed Blunt. That's the second first down that he has picked up on via the quarterback sneak. It's interesting. Arizona State has not changed their defense. They're still running that 4-3 back there. I thought if they saw the last time they got beat on the Blunt quarterback sneak that they'd pinch the guys in there, get the people right up on them, but they stayed the same. He took advantage of it. And a first down for Washington state they brought the chains in to measure to be sure but the cougars do officially now have the first down at their own 31 yard line and we are down to 4 16 remaining to play they'll start the clock as soon as the chains are set and the cougars now change not only three wide receivers but they'll also bring in bill frank a junior tight end from chehalis so they've changed four of the receiving core on this play now frank hurries to get off the field there was one too many on and up on the right side now goes Kittrick Taylor. So receivers out both ways. Blunt for the snap. Rolls back to the left. Throws the ball upfield. Great catch by Rick Chase at the 36-yard line. Chase with a man draped over his back that time. Robbie Boyd. And Chase somehow fingertipped that ball and hauled it in at the 36. Those are the kind of catches if you don't make the ball pop straight up in the air. Possible interception. Great catch by Chase. I mean, his fingers just absorbed that ball. Nice run. And, you know, it's really interesting. Washington State is is keeping Arizona State really off guard. They're throwing when you think they're going to run. They're running when you think they're going to throw. It's a good It's a good game plan. They're sticking right to it. Now Bill Frank comes in. Kerry Porter is helped off to the sidelines. Uh -oh. He was a little bit wobbly coming off. And so Porter is out of the game. Tingstad and Pringle are now the running backs. Ed Tingstad and Mike Pringle for Washington State. They are split behind Ed Blunt. Two receivers to the right side. Tight end to the left. Here is Blunt with the ball. He hands off late to Pringle up the middle. Goes Mike Pringle at the 40, the 41, and he will be very close to another Cougar first down with 3.25 to go, and that clock still ticking away. 
The ball to the 41, a five-yard run by Mike Pringle of Washington State. That was just a delayed draw. Ed Blunt just kind of shuttle pitched it back inside to Pringle. Very dangerous play, but a very nice play. Arizona State was flying out of there. Blunt was going to run the bootleg. They thought he had the ball, but a good fake. Nice defensive play. Had he been able to break a couple tackles, he's gone because the safety's not even over there. He's covering the wide receivers. Well, the Cougars would love to get one and break it and go. It's a first down, but they're doing something else they would like to do now. They're gaining yardage and eating up the clock. They, they're keeping the ball away from the explosive Sun Devils of Arizona State. And Arizona State still has three timeouts left. Washington State only has one. This is a great football game. I love these kind of things. I hope you're enjoying it. This may wind up being a Cougar classic. Oh, uh, boy. I think it is already, no matter what happens the, the rest of the way. If it is, I'm buying you milk and cookies after this ball game. All right, I'll look for it. Ball at the 41-yard line. Two men out to the right side, one to the left to split receivers. Kittrick Taylor wide right. Rick Chase slotted inside him. Split backs in the backfield. Motion back through the formation by Michael James. Counter option turn. Blunt runs right. Fakes the pitch. Tried to get the ball upfield. Got to about the 44-yard line. And almost had the ball stripped away as the Arizona State Sun Devils. Defensive safety Darren Willis leading the way. Went after that ball. Jim Reynosa, an outside linebacker, was also there. And the ball at the 44-yard line. So a three-yard gain that time for Ed Blunt. He has rushed the ball now 13 times for 74 yards on a in this football game two and a half minutes remaining to play and the Cougars at their own 44 second down and seven Boatman over the ball at center split backs once again behind Eddie Blunt motion to the formation by Chase goes through left to right counter option turn Blunt pitch back right Tingstead around the corner at the 50 down to the 45 yard line that is a very big play make it the 44 for Ed Tingstead because that takes the ball now over midfield with just over two minutes to go in the game Boy, this whole drive started on the Washington State 20 yard line so they were in a position if they had would go one two three and punt that Arizona State could come right back be an excellent field position maybe get a field goal out of it well Washington State is eating up the clock they're eating up the yardage and they're getting right down there knocking on the door it's at the Arizona State 44 yard line two minutes exactly remaining in the football game two men split left one right split backs blunt the counter option turn runs right got his head down didn't get very much as he tried the right side that time that play I think Paul took a little too long to develop for the situation the presents itself now that is that Arizona State is coming hard and they uh, wedged their way into it and just took the Cougars out of the offense that time well Arizona State is really forcing Washington State now to the defensive they're blitzing guys they're sending guys in the gap they're really trying to mess up the option they did at that time ball still on the 44 yard line of Arizona State on the right hash Cougars have wide side to their left split backs with two men out to the left here's Blunt takes the snap rolls left wide side throws ball deep it is overthrown meant for wood but while it didn't gain any yardage it did stop the clock with 121 to go the Cougars however do need at least one more big play or one more first down in this drive before they're in any sort of position to go for a field goal and take into account that Arizona State also has three timeouts left with three timeouts and about a minute left on the clock see the incomplete pass stops the clock that's just as good as a timeout this is a big play third down for the Cougars and 10 yards to go ball at the Arizona State 44 yard line the tight end is to the left side that's Frank signals called Here's motion through by Kittrick Taylor to the left side now. Split backs. No fake. Back goes Blunt. Sets up. Throws left side. That ball is caught inside the 40, but that's not enough for a first down. That ball was caught inside the 40-yard line by Kittrick Taylor. Mark it at the 39, but only a five-yard advance for Washington State. And now you talk about big plays. Here comes fourth and five for the Cougars. And, of course, time ticking away. We're inside the final minute of this football game. Skip McClendon for the defensive end for Arizona State did a great job of putting pressure on Ed Blunt. Taylor turned it back inside, but he was supposed to slide back out. He didn't have, he have time because Blunt was on his back trying to throw that ball. We had a timeout called, I think, by the officials for uh, some reason there. Neither team was charged with a timeout, at least on the scoreboard clock. The Cougars uh, had only one left. They still show one. Arizona State still shows three. And now let's see what the Cougars are going to do. Here comes the punting team in. Would you fake the punt in this spot? No way. Basically, what Washington State did is they ran the clock down, took as much time off the clock as possible. Used, they didn't use their last timeout, but what they're going to try to do is pin Arizona State as far down in their territory as possible with three timeouts 
Plus, it's a long way to go. Cougars took a five-yard penalty to do that back to the 44-yard line again. And Myers has a little more room to punt. Ten men on the line. Now one drops off. They have nine up front. Here's the snap back. Here's the kick. Gets it up in the air. High. Parker waiting for it. Fair catch at his own. Let's it go now. He called the fair catch. It hit inside the 10. Rolls back on the Cougars. Sean Landrum is going to down it at the 10-yard line with 27 seconds remaining to play in the football game. And so now, Paul, there are two things that we have to watch for. The big Arizona State play, or could the Cougars perhaps cause the turnover? Well, Washington State's going to come in here. They're going to bring a couple of extra defensive backs in, try to play man under. They're going to lock up on the wide receivers, play zone deep, not give up anything cheap. Arizona State's going to try to work the sidelines. They're going to try to get it out of bounds. It's... <laughs> To go 90 yards in 27 seconds, or they don't have to go that far. They only have to go up to about the 30 or 35-yard line to try a field goal. Even the two-minute drill doesn't work here. You don't have two Throw minutes. Throw it out the window. 27 seconds. Van Raphorst at quarterback. Cougars have Thomason 30 yards off the line playing center field. Collins dropping back. Back goes Van Raphorst to his goal line. Throws long up the field. It is completed at the 40 to the 41-yard line. Excellent catch by Jeff Gallimore, the tight end penalty marker down back at the five-yard line. 21 seconds remaining in the game. Holding. Holding called against Arizona State back at the five-yard line as Gallimore, the tight end, caught that ball up over the middle for what appeared to be a big gain to the 41, but wipe it out. Boy, he took a shot. Sean Landrum, the right corner, came in there and just hammered him. James Hasty was also there, but that play killed you. That was a beautiful pass by Van Raphorst. The tight end made a nice job of catching it, held onto the ball when he took a shot. That also eats up the clock and knocks him back five more yards. They oh, will man. take that ball back to the five yard line and it will be first down over again and a long 15 yards to go. Arizona State has to be careful. If they throw an interception here, Washington State picks it off. They, they have one timeout left. They can get the ball back in pretty good field position. Might even win the game with a field goal. I would think that's what they do is just call the, the timeout and kick it. Now the clock running, 17 seconds. Split back. Signals called by Van Raphorst. Back he goes. Hands the ball off in the backfield. Running to the right side is Darren Tupper, the fullback. He'll take it out to the 10. Time down to 8 seconds, and we have a time called on the field, but uh, I'm not sure that they're going to take very much time. They brought the ball that that time out from the five to the nine yard line a four yard advance for arizona state and now out of the huddle they come with eight seconds to go second down for the arizona state sun devils and 11 yards to go and now they take a timeout on the field so it's timeout and the score tied 21 21 we take timeout on this cougar football broadcast <laughs> the same thing we had against UCLA. Remember? Yeah, I, I think, you know, down at this this far this down, you might be smarter just to say, hey, we just to settle for it. Uh, player of the game, Kerry Porter, tell me how much, uh, how many yards he Unofficially, has. Unofficially, Kerry has 135 on one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I've got him for uh, 23 carries for 135. That's unofficial. And one touchdown. Okay. And I'm also going to get Tim Downing at defensive line. He did okay. a great job. Okay. <clears throat> by Van Raphorst. Back to intercept it is Thomason on his own 42-yard line, and that's going to do it. Time ran out with the ball in the air as Van Raphorst took the snap, dropped back, threw the ball. The Tingstead brothers meet at midfield, slap hands, high fives, a hug. Ed Tingstead and Mark Tingstead on opposite sides tonight, and they go out of here with a 21-21 tie as the Cougars pick off their fifth pass of the night on the final pass of the ball game, thrown up there by Jeff Van Rapport, he threw five interceptions in tonight's ball game, but then mark it down. He also threw a tremendous 52 yard completion that set up the tying touchdown in the football game. So it is over, and what a ball game it was as the Cougars came in here, heavy underdogs 18 points officially. But the newspapers down here in the Valley of the Sun saying things like 66 to nothing were their predictions. And some of the columns down here, the Cougars just totally overlooked. 
and uh, shaken up by their coach this past week with tough, tough practice sessions. And the Cougars came in tonight and played tough, tough football and battled for a 21-21 tie. And actually, to be perfectly honest, Arizona State tied Washington State. The Cougars were ahead 21-14. The Sun Devils got the tying touchdown, and they elected to go for the tying point, not to gamble for the win here tonight, not to go for two. So the Cougars wind up in a 21-all deadlock with Arizona State. And I'll be back to recap it all for you after we take time out on this Cougar football broadcast. Okay, how much time do we have here? Yes. Two minutes, okay, good. They had 180, 192. We had. Oh, what? Did we? That can't be right. I must have knocked something off of there. Uh, I've got him for more than that. Mike, what did he say the Cougar total yardage was? Did he say? Three, four, five. Okay, I somewhere in here, I think when Paul was getting his stuff out, he banged into the thing. I don't have enough beads for the Cougars. Three forty-five against three seventy-one. Okay, I had three seventy-one for them. Okay, three forty-five. Okay. It wasn't two forty-five. How long do we have in this break? Hold on. <clears throat> 